And I believe we have sound and lights and all the things are rolling. Hello and welcome to Legends of the Drowned Isles, Campaign 2, The Great Confusion. A homebrew D&D 5th ed camp campaign, <clears throat> which my throat is full of excitement and anticipation. I'm the host and GM, I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. I have with me my delightful players starting on my left. Great. That's had to look and check where your left was. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. Sorry about um, that. My name is Pat. I play Silas Marsh, uh, local warlock. My name is Marie, and I play Annie, who is a human rogue. Hey, I'm Nax, and I play Medrag, half fork cleric. All right. Getting right into it. When we last left our intrepid adventurers, you know, I've always wanted to say that. I don't think I've said it enough. <laughs> uh, folks had just visited the uh, the Professor Dudek Bitterhorn's Museum of Curiosities, a strange collection of uh, items and artifacts and creatures and both living and dead flora and fauna of the world, as well as strange displays like religious uh, collections, essentially. And even then, met with Professor Bitterhorn himself who seemed intrigued by the collection of the three of you. First of all, also actually recognizing uh, Medrick from the songs that have been sung about him as the Phoenix champion, but also a, uh, a resonance, if you will, with the ring that Silas has found, the ring of Argenti Sagax, and bringing you back to his own office to discuss matters. He quickly learns, as do you, that... Uh, or sorry, he quickly learns that, yes, indeed, you did find that ring. You quickly learn that he has a ring of his own and is, in fact, a member of Argenti Sagax. Excitedly, he decides there's a lot to be talked about, but here is not quite private enough. And so he opens the door in the back of his office and invites you all to travel through, as he does as well. And you find yourself on the rocky coast of the island of Lithmon, halfway across the, uh, the uh, 55 islands of Omatia. Beside you, uh, the uh, sea is brisk and a little bit chilled. Um, it's a couple of hours earlier, so the sun is a little bit higher in the sky than when you left. Uh, and uh, you see before you a rocky coast and what looks like old destroyed ruins, which he declares is uh, the place to discuss things. He urges you off of the beach and to follow him through the somewhat almost unrecognizable ruins. It looks as though they've been here for long enough that the repeated washings of water have worn away most, if any, signifiers. It roughly looks temple-shaped, but then again, temples come in all shapes and sizes, so that may not be as good an indicator as possible. Uh, along the way, he kind of makes uh, a little small talk about the weather, but nothing really significant. Kind of gesturing to you to, to follow, but not uh, talk too, too more detailed. Until finally he comes to the back of this enormous ruins, which is actually built into the side of a, the rocky cliffs. And before you stands a pile of rubble, into which once more he pulls out that strange doorknob he'd used before to summon the portal that came here, injects it into a portion of the rubble, and a doorway forms. This time, after it opens, it looks as though it just travels to a set of stairs going down. Please, follow me into uh, what I've affectionately called the old library of Argenti Sagax. Somewhat of a grandiose name, I admit, but it's what I've been able to collect. I invite you all to come in. And indeed, the rubble itself is either illusory or perhaps it's some sort of transformation that happens or guardian. Who knows? But as he, enter, he, he follows you all in, closes yep. the door behind oh. him, and it becomes once more a door on the inside. Small wow. lights illuminate the hallway. Um, looks like little small permanent uh, light fixtures. A little bit of flicker. Something like a, a, a permanent light lamp. Those do exist. 
but this one seems to have a considerable number of them that respond to your entrance, or perhaps responding to Professor Bitterhorn. This uh, somewhat aged dwarf, uh, but finely dressed uh, and with uh, some excitement, almost palpable in the way that he's moving along, as though he's, he's excited to show off this place. The stairs go downward and downward and downward, probably a few hundred feet at this point, it's hard to see the, the landing on which you came in. And then opens up into a broader space. And I have to find my window here. Too many windows open. Uh, it opens up to a, a, a broad entrance, probably 30, 40 feet across. Two large statues stand by the entrance. Well, one of them is a statue. The other one, nothing more than a pile of rubble. Looks to be dwarven uh, made, looks to be dwarven uh, statues, although the statues themselves are slightly larger than the actual dwarves. They would have been uh, uh, presented. Uh, one of them with a large shield, the one that still stands with a large shield. Uh, leads you through. You can see off to your left a doorway leading somewhere in, and more lights are illuminating in the hallways ahead of you. Um, you can see... As you first enter, looks like a sets of shelves on which there were small cubby holes and little little nameplates cut in brass that have been engraved with um, looks like the the just the last names of different people and uh, it kind of it's kind of somewhat amusingly uh, Bitterhorn goes over to it up oh, no mail today oh well perhaps someday <laughs> soon something will come in how many That's people live here. Well, to be honest, nobody lives here now. But I still have hope that others will discover this place. I found it in ruins, and I spent a considerable amount of time back and forth, trying to restore what I could, and once again build up the store that Argenti Sagex had. It does seem as though this place was ransacked quite some time ago, lost and forgotten, told of in only a few fragments of pieces of paper and strange maps embedded in books that I, I'd managed to run across. A bit of luck, really, that I found it. But now that I have, I'm determined once more to find that this information no longer lies dormant or forgotten entirely. He seems quite well, sad about this presentation. You can each make an insight check. Insight. What was that, Medric? You said? You're doing great work. I was never one for the scholarly arts, but knowledge is important. I've dedicated my life to it. One form or another. 22. Wow. Okay. Plus five. <laughs> Still really good. Anything from Silas or Annie? I, I just wrote mine down. Yep, I got a 13, she got a 12. Oh, sorry, I wasn't looking at that particular screen. Too many screens. People were talking, so I was just like, right down. All right. Okay. For uh, Silas and Annie, there definitely seems to be a tone of sadness in Bitterhorn's uh, voice, uh, kind of expressed especially when he amusingly looks for mail, as if making a bit of a joke of it, yes, but at the same time genuinely hoping there would be something there, genuinely hoping perhaps that someone had dropped off something or other. For you, Medric, um, there's a yearning that's deep in here. He's restored this place, but he restored it because it was lost. He's claimed to be a member of the Argenti Sagex, but you start to wonder if he's ever met one. Or if he just found their remains and decided to carry on the traditions or whatever. It's hard to say, but it start, that doubt starts to creep into your mind a little bit. For him, the... Um, and actually, for context, I will go ahead and shift everybody over to the actual map so you get a chance to see what it looks like. If you are in Roll20, you should see the map there now. There shouldn't be anything hidden from you. Um, while I've, I'll describe it in uh, the current form, 
Um, this is obviously, this is not a map that I created. This is a map I, I got through a, a Patreon that I supported. And it looks beautiful, and it's far more beautiful than the actual location itself. Uh, imagine this is, in some ways, what you'll see in this map is the florid description that, that Bitterhorn will give of the space. This is what he, he imagines the place to look like. Uh, that, not that it actually looks like this much anymore. I'm going to zoom, in about, or zoom out a bit on the map here so that everybody can see. This map from, I think it's Heroic Games, which I got this map from. Uh, beautiful work that they do. And he starts to lead you on a bit of a tour of the place. Um, leading you straight on through the, um, the preceding hallway. You can see there's a large hallway off to your left. Hopefully everybody has access to their characters. It doesn't matter at the moment anyway. You can just scroll around the map. I'll be moving Dudek just simply as a, as a, a point of reference for people. Um, so this area, this corner where he first came in, that's what he referred to essentially as the mail room, and that's where all the different cubbies are. And again, the map shows them full of documents and scrolls, but there's nothing but uh, scraps of small pieces of paper um, that seem to be uh, as much uh, being used for... Uh, the substance and structure of spider webs, as well as anything else. Um, the uh, next spot he leads you through, however, he's a lot more excited about. On the right-hand side, it looks as though this is where he spent uh, the considerable amount of paper that he's found. Um, it is organized and uh, categorized by different labels, some of which seem familiar, some... Uh, do not. Um, oh, too many mice. Here we go. Um, hmm. You can see labels, there's a teleportation circle there. Uh, I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> uh, but you'll see numerous uh, labels. The Whims of Air. Dolus, D-O-L-U-S. The Plain of Storms. Uh, the Fairy Woods. The Solid Ground. They all seem to be numerous bits and pieces some of the books that uh, Annie would have seen actually in the 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 Alarian library in the castle library um, there would be references there I don't know how much time Annie spent in the library but there would have been tutoring which would have tried to would have tried to at least uh, uh, give you some idea of the cosmology of the world um, it's a weirdly good place to hide when you don't want to be found <laughs> it's true um, so numerous uh, d folders and and, uh, and and spaces, a few small things that look like they might be artifacts or bits and pieces. There's a, a strange curved blackened horn. It's only about uh, three inches long on one shelf that's labeled Ludomeni. Um, there is a, a collection of what look like bark covered scrolls. Uh, by a label called the World Tree. And then just in one spot, you can barely make out the label, uh, but it seems to suggest the word limbo. And in fact, all the documents that seem to be in that spot are, are couched in uh, some sort of permanent shadow. These are some of the works that I've been able to catch and find and put together in my searches. So much was lost and so much is difficult to interpret. Dozens of languages, dozens, I say, are represented here, some of which I've never been able to find translations for. Some, the ancient orc language, for example, the language of your people, uh, champion, are, are pictorial in nature, impossible to decipher. I've I been hoping to make a... Try to help uh, out. Uh, I've been ho hoping to make a trip to the orc dinner sometime to see if I can consult the mighty monoliths, but... It's not exactly a free land at the moment. For my people to go, anyway. Kind of pauses for a second and then... But in here, leads you across the hallway to a... Uh, to the large room. It looks as though it's a teleportation circle from the map that's here. And in fact, the, the floor is engraved. But the one thing I didn't have a thing to put on the map for... Um, is there's an enormous stone table in the center of the room. 
uh, on top of the table. It's a, it's a, a weird kind of irregular shape, roughly uh, oval or, or uh, circular in nature. But on the top, as you walk, you can see the top surface is, is rough and, and uh, mottled. And periodically, there are these small uh, crystals, uh, a couple of inches protruding from the top of the table. They're all of different sizes and shapes. Most of them are pointed. Some of them are rounded off. Some of them even have little bifurcations and bends in them. And as you walk closer um, to it, um, this here is my pride and joy. The map of Omesha. And indeed, as you look and walk closer to the table, you can see that the bumps are because there are raised land masses on this massive table cut into stone. It resembles the map of Omesha, which uh, probably Annie would have seen the f a full map of Omesha. There have been many created over time. Um, Medrick, you would have seen partial maps uh, based on your travels and where you've been uh, sort of s situated. Um, Silas, it's unlikely you've probably seen uh, a full map of Amesha, uh, but there would have been there would have been kind of stylized versions of it that, ap that appear from time to time. Um, in each of the islands, uh, the names are engraved in the stone just just been beside it. In fact, the the water parts are represented as as dips down in the uh, stone itself, as though they've been sunken in and carved in to give the impression of a, of a, of a relief. Um, and in some of the locations, only about, I think it's four, um, i got to get the right button here, um, do you see the crystals actually uh, uh, set into the table by those, uh, by the names? And in the rest, there are just empty sockets where crystals may have once stood. Um, for Annie and Medrick, go ahead and make a history roll. For Silas, oh, yeah. make a history roll at disadvantage. I definitely don't have plus five to history. <laughs> I got a 12 total. Uh, I have a 19. 19, okay. I get six. Six? Spent a, a lot big... of time in libraries, guys. <laughs> Library time is important. Um, yep. For you, Silas, the, the the map is, well, you can decide about whether you're impressed or not. It seems to be well made. A lot of time was spent in carving it. As you see some of the, the islands, you can see that even some of the uh, coves have been cut into them. Um, if you look at uh, Escus, you can see the, the uh, Silver Moon Bay, uh, much as you had rep remembered it. You even see small indentations where they are not indentations, rather, but small peaks where the uh, the dead man's fingers are. Uh, the the reef not far from the the lighthouse, uh, and you can even make out where uh, indeed the the uh, marsh village uh, sits on the other side of this this promontory where the uh, the castle of the Baron lives. Um, Medrick, as you're looking it over, you make out several of the, of the islands. You can see the Orkdana off to the uh, north uh, western part of the uh, map. You also notice that um, the the map extends beyond the waters you're used to, um, mm -hmm. but on those edges of where the 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 waters are, the surface is mottled and rough. But there are a couple of spots in those sands where there are additional sockets, but no names are, are, uh, are put in where the sockets are, except for one, and it looks as though the name itself was scratched out of the stone uh, quite violently. What if, what goes there? Um, its name me. seems to be lost in time, but an ancient city that was on the edge of the, of the, of the wasted lands, on the burning sands. Uh, not too many people were able to make much of a city there. I think your people were some of the few who could manage it. Uh, it's uh, most inhospitable. I've sailed out to the edge of it in a number of places, but nowhere could we find a place to land, and once our ship was even stuck for a week in the uh, shallows and the sands that are around it. It's too dangerous for most, most sailors to even consider, so they won't go near it. Even the one that I had right. working for me, well, needed a little bit extra incentive to go. 
Um, for you, Annie, as you're gl 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 glancing over the map, you're sort of reciting the names. And there would have been several rhymes and several other poems and different things to try to remember all the names of all the islands, the different different uh, regions, the different, uh, uh, you know, munici uh, not municipalities necessarily, although certainly any of the Alarian municipalities would have been named. And you can kind of see that there are small marks on the map where some of the major cities like Pitajun actually are. But as you're looking over the map, a couple of things kind of stand out to you a little bit puzzlingly. puzzlingly. Uh, first off, not all the islands are in the right places. A few of them seem to be shifted somewhat from where you remember them being. Uh, you kind of do a little bit of mental math, maybe even span out your hand a few times just to kind of measure the shapes. And they don't quite line up as you recall. You don't have a map on hand, and you don't perfectly remember the map, so maybe you're just remembering it wrong. But you also notice that some of the names are wrong, too. Um, the name of the... Uh, let's see. Ugh, where do we go? Um, a few of the, the island names are not the recognizable ones you would know. Uh, let's see if I can find that. Um... In particular, one that stands out right in, in the middle of the of the uh, Western uh, Conference, the island known as Thunk today is actually listed as Silver Hall. And even Alaria itself, uh, it seems to be Alaria on one side of the island and Esdria on the other. Little in inaccuracies like that start to line up to a bigger picture that this map may be older than any map you've ever seen of Omatia. What caused them to change, you don't know, obviously, but uh, or they could have been mistaken, or maybe it was done from, say, a dwarven perspective, and they didn't know the names of these other islands, or they had their own names for them. It's hard to say, but these little bits and pieces start to uh, line up. Uh, now, the does four... Esdram... Oh. Oh, go ahead. Does Ezra make any sense to me at all? You don't know that name. Um, it's been Ilaria for as long as you can recall. And anything you've ever seen referenced uh, calls it as one solid island of Ilaria. And the kingdom of Ilaria spans over numerous islands on the, uh, the eastern stretch. Um, one other minor one, Muria, uh, is actually listed as Lemuria, which is kind of weird. Um... The four islands that have, uh, the four islands, yeah, that have stones right now, Lithman, which is one of them, uh, Dakra, Daventu, and Striendek. There's no particular pattern that you can notice from those, but they're all in the western area. Uh, and there's, uh, yeah, one spot where the name has been crossed out by the Great Wastes. And he uh, just question to the DM, he called mm -hmm. that the Burning Sands do we do we already have a name for that for that island? Like, have we heard of it? Like, our characters. Well, the the burning sands or the great waste. There's numerous names for it. That simply refers to the sandy islands or the sandy not islands, sorry, but the sandy area beyond the waters of Omasia. Um, they are considered to be a place of of like a grand desert that surrounds all of Omasia, except far to the north, where it's all uh, snow and ice. Um, it's inhospitable. Uh, it's generally regarded as savage, wild, possibly haunted, in, inhospitable. I've already said that one. Uh, too dry. The, it's, it's, oh, the, the lands themselves are, are burned down to cinders and ash and sand and nothing more. Um, and you said it was in the southwest or, uh, or just the, that is an all around thing that's, that accompanies surrounds okay. <laughs> surrounds uh, Omatia, surrounds all the islands just okay. beyond the waters uh, but the one island that was pointed out yes is in the south uh, the southwest that's the one that's off of the uh, the great waste itself and the name has been uh, scrubbed off violently do I have any clue what that one is called today um as far as you know, from your upbringing, there are no cities in the Great Wastes. 
It's impossible yeah, I, to live I guess there I just... and no one can get there. Okay. It's pretty cool that the orcs were able to establish some kind of like living arrangements there, though. I'll keep that in mind. It's it's mostly that the orcs have been the only ones brave enough to try. Yeah. And there are stories and legends, but no one does it on a regular basis. There are a lot of people who try and never come back. That was their stated goal. We're going to go to the Great Wastes and explore, and no one hears of them again. But there are stories that they have been there. And in fact, uh, Bitterhorn would uh, would concur. So I've I've heard one or two that indicate that they've gone to the Great Waste and come back, but very little description of anything, if anything, they found there. Uh, nonetheless, this map was a delightful treasure that I found buried under rubble, almost as though it had been itself uh, trying to be hidden. And over time, I've traveled each of the islands that I've been able to and established, uh, well, one of these gate stones. And he points and actually picks up one of the the uh, stones that's in one of the sockets, a socket for Lithman, in fact. These are remarkable. They seem to be the aftermath, in many ways, of massive interplanar gates being opened, possibly even able to to themselves open gates, but I haven't unlocked any uh, ability for that. These ones seem inert, in fact. Um, they have a rather unusual structure on the inside, rather deep-looking, if you will, non-translucent, but I haven't been able to discover anything more. They are all coded, though, I believe, and he kind of points out the end to you, and it does have a particular shape, um, it does look more like a, uh, a, a matching shape of the socket that it was in. So that they are known to only go, as far as I can see, into one socket and one socket alone. The ultimate purpose of the table, the map, is uh, sadly somewhat lost, inscrutable. I've been looking for evidence of that as well. This, this map is... So so detailed, but also it must be older than any map I've ever seen. Consistencies with any current map. And I point out the Ilaria thing, and none of my studies I've, have I ever seen Ilaria re referred to as Esdria. Ah. You notice that. And he smiles appreciatively that you actually did notice that. You get the impression that he has shown this to a few people, and they were like, yep, it's a map. That's nice. Um, and he kind of has a little twinkle in his eye, almost uh, kind of excited. Indeed, indeed. That's one of the most peculiar parts about this map. I've had a lot of speculation on that, but it seems largely, as you said, inconsistent with modern maps. Esdria, in particular, draws up no memories to anyone I've been able to talk to, even some rather particular and cantankerous elves who claim to have a bit longer lifespan than most dwarves. Their memory may not have as long a lifespan as their physical bodies, mind you. But I, as for the inconsistencies, as I've said, I've sailed tremendously, and from my own measurements, they are indeed incorrect. The only speculations I have is that whoever made the map may have made them from incorrect observations. Perhaps they were measuring by the wrong stars to figure out exactly where things were, or maybe it was a deliberate uh, miscreation. Uh, not really sure. The other theory... How old is the map, roughly? I have no idea. No way to really date it. Aside from the fact that enough. it seems to be uh, ancient indeed. The stone itself, I can't even find a location for. It doesn't seem to be, well, particularly native to any of the islands I've been to. I have a speculation that it comes from one of the islands no one's been to in a long time. One of my other hobbies, I suppose, is searching for that island. Ancient Athlon. Athlon. Yes. Indeed, you've heard of it. Not everybody has. We've met somebody who was from there. Somebody, you, something. You have. There were some interesting stories, which is one of the reasons that I was intent on joining this circus this time. So these stories have some truth to them, then. 
some yes and i'll just uh recount because it's like probably like last year but because i know i play her max does not remember but i'll recount like the regalesta and how we found her and what happened because we already did mention the uh buzzy mcgraw's yeah, yeah, face that guy <laughs> Taraz? Yeah. He who Taraz. shall not be named. See, yeah. I, the player, have purposefully blocked the name. Like, I recognize the name, <laughs> but I've blocked the name out of my memory to not accidentally say it. And I, the GM, I'm shocked that I remembered that name because it's been a while since I've said it out loud. Um, Do you actually give the name directly, Medric, when you're explaining? Or does anybody else give the name? Or are you, are you kind of dance around it? I, I flat out would, would say we don't say his name. Weird shit happens every time yeah. we say his name. So we mm -hmm. call him Bozzy McVaz face. I'll, I'll or write it down on a piece him. of paper. Well, we've already, uh, Silas had already shown him the name last session. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, I'd forgotten that part. So, yes. Um, he kind of yeah, seems well, a bit... It's a bit like where we found her, like she was stuck in a crystal power ring, some kind of storm device. And, and where is this Regalester now? I'd love to interview her. Uh, the last we heard, she was still in a elf daughter, unless she moved away or went on adventures of her own. And she was kind of hiding. She had taken on a, uh, a yeah. sea elf form uh, and kind of was hiding in the in the pub in the populace. Well, I'm sure I could contact her. I would appreciate that most. Um, most incredibly, I have so many questions, but um, there'll be time enough for all the questions, I suppose, and t uh, as we as we progress. Nonetheless, the idea of meeting someone who might have been alive during the Athlonian era is stunning. But I have more to show you if you if you'll join me. Yeah, I'll follow him. Um, he leads you over to uh, kind of further northward and while he was proud of the table itself um, he's almost giddy to show you this strange creation um, it looks as though it's uh, kind of greenish gray that, that, that patina that old brass and copper gets after it's been exposed to the elements for a long period of time it has a sort of mechanical look to it, but there's clearly elements of magic because not everything is fully connected and yet seems to be connected, seems to be in certain spaces with relates to, with, to another. It has a broad, flat uh, plane in the middle. I'm going to try to describe it. It's going to, I'm going to be describing it in circular ways, I'm afraid, but that's kind of the, the, the nature of the thing. Um, he, uh, he points to it, and this is the planar orrery, mostly intact even, if inert. It shows the relative connections of the planes and their, their strengths and uh, intersections where they come in contact with Omesha and potentially with each other, although the multidimensional nature of planar existence means that any simple representation is going to be inaccurate uh, as much as it can be. In the center, there is that large disk, which again resembles Omesha. This time, uh, it's not a three-dimensional relief map, but more of an etched-in version of it. Uh, not all the islands are even represented on this particular map, just some of the major ones. Eskis, being one of the largest islands, is actually prominent uh, and easy to sort of identify. And then the, the sort of eastern chain is, is represented, the the, uh, the the western Ulvip, the large, massive water body where most of the islands are. So you can recognize the shape of Omesha in the middle. Surrounding it, with a bit of a gap between it and this outer ring, uh, is what looks to be a, a segmented ring, um, representing, you would imagine, from seeing both the previous map and, and uh, other maps, the Great Wastes itself. But instead of, of one solid circle that surrounds it, it appears to be segmented in multiple places as if it could move and shift. Um, for what reason, you're not sure. Um, above the great disk are multiple small arms on which platters hold symbols. 
Um, the, you can see some symbols that are recognizable. Medric, right away, you recognize the symbol of Ignis. One of them, cool. an, an older version of the symbol, but there are many different ver variations, uh, almost as many as there are uh, temples themselves. Each one seems to, to create some sort of representation. This one seems to be uh, almost like a, a, uh, a campfire. Um, it appears like a, a, a collection of, of well-ordered um, sticks and a flame above it, um, standing tall. It appears to be one of the closest uh, arms to the physical shape of Omesha itself. Okay. Uh, another one contains, as I go to my uh, screen here, um, another one contains a, uh, a what looks like a, a curved um, gust of wind caught mid-motion uh, and there are slanted pillars that seem as though they've been blown over by this wind uh, another one seems to be uh, somehow floating in mid-air uh, a blocky cloud which has another curving motion as though as though uh, water rushing down upon the ground itself um, the other one of the other familiar ones remarkably consistent throughout all you've seen the squared arch of Tendu is represented, um, as well as symbols that you're not familiar with. Uh, one that looks to be a dancing uh, figure that from one angle looks uh, male, from the other looks female, and as you move around it almost seems like it is still in motion. Even though you, you can't see it f moving, it's like an, an, an illusion, an optical illusion. Um, below you see representations of uh, what may be the hells, perhaps, um, some sort of irregular, many-pointed star, fairly large. Another one which looks like a flat bar. On one side is a similar symbol of the many-pointed star. On the other side is a what looks to be a perfectly squared-off cube, um, kind of perched on the on this on this piece of of well metal you think in this case that seems to be balanced perfectly on a pyramid on the point in fact of a pyramid and dozens of other symbols like that seem to be in place it is similar to the map representation but this one is meant to move there was once a power source to this that was not found worth it but since then I've been able to well, with some rather helpful gnomish inventors, create a hand-cranked version, so at least it would be animated. But, then he starts to crank it, and you can see on the back there this much newer uh, brass uh, uh, wheel hand-crank uh, thing with a wooden handle, and as he cranks it, it just starts clicking. There's no particular motion. As you can see, despite the, the force bit behind it, there's something missing. Somewhere dear, deep in the middle of this, right about, and he kind of moves his arm in, and, and there's that, that, that perhaps irrational fear at that particular point, point, with all the arms and all the different things that they have moving around here, if it did start moving, it'd be one of those things that uh, would be like putting your hand into a blender. There's just too much chance that the thing would just take your arm off, the way it looks so strong and, and sturdy. But it is immobile and, and nearly uh, stuck together at this point. And he, but he points to it. it. What's that? Would a star stone do it? Um, a star stone could provide the necessary power if I can figure out how to attach it. Um, if you happen to have a star stone, I'd be love. I'd love to try. But it's still missing something right in here. And he kind of points to the 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 center. And um, midway between the plane of Omesha and where all these arms are. It's an almost invisible uh, collection of wires and uh, beams uh, that all seem to uh, uh, indicate a shape, uh, a missing space. It's almost like a nest. And until he points it out, you really can't even see it. That It's so fine uh, and, and so, uh, so empty. Um, something is supposed to go here. It's a approximately the size of a couple of fists wide, I think, 
roughly circular. I have no idea what that is. And without it, I fear that this is nothing more than a remnant of the past. Uh, Silas is very interested and is ducking in around the uh, arms, looking at the different symbols. Uh, he doesn't say anything, but he's looking for anything that uh, might represent Mother Hydra. Okay. Um, make a religion check, I guess. Ooh, there we go. Um, nice. As you're looking around, uh, a couple of things occur to you. Um, the way this is split and segmented into two, whoever built this, with whatever theories of extraplanar existence they had, there is um, an organization to what's on top and what's below, and the distance seems to have some significance as well. On top, you do see uh, things that... that uh, obviously, Ignis, for example, that represent the, the, the gods that you're familiar with in this world. Uh, on the bottom, there do seem to be representations more of, of uh, fiendish things. And it is among that that you actually find a very small representation of what looks like the, uh, the, the similar um, multi-pointed irregular starred shapes you've seen before. This one only about the size of a marble. And from that, however, is extending a twisting, turning uh, collection of, uh, of long, writhe bodies that, that break at the top into multiple heads of snakes. And you get the feeling that it's not exactly the symbol that is used most often among the clan right now. But it is one of the images that Mother Hydra has used to communicate in the past, the sort of uh, hybridization and collection. That is, it is very, very small, and it is on the underside of the map. Cool. He will note that. Um, you all, is anybody else taking a closer look? Yeah, I'll uh, take a look at the center and at the symbol of Ignis, uh... I mean, to the center, like, if a star stone would fit into it is what I'm trying to figure out. Okay. Uh, make an investigation check for Medra. Oh, no. I'm bad at investigation. Oh, hey. It's not 20. That's Natural 20, but that's a 19. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you're poking around, a couple of things uh, stand out to you. One, there's an empty platform. Uh, all the rest seem to have some sort of symbolization in them, but there's one that's empty. And you just out of the corner of your eye, note that there is the stub of something that was attached there that's been broken off. Um, it, it kind of stands out as both close to Omatia but completely missing. Um, as you examine the, the spot in the middle, you think, well, you know, the star stones come in multiple sizes. Um, most of them are relatively small. And this would actually be a weird fit for a star stone. Um, okay. The metal around it probably would melt if a star stone actually came in contact with it. Star stones are, are too powerful in many ways. But it does take on a... a uh, you get the general shape of this at this point. Uh, again, a little bit smaller than, than like a fist and a half, um, roundish, um, with uh, odd little inserts at different points around the outside, as though it... it it really is meant to fit something in particular that goes in the center, um, but not... Uh, so Starstone would be too much for it, whatever it is. You also kind of think, well, he's got the crank over there. The power is not connected to this part. This is more of a control, maybe? You remember, you're reminded uh, of two things, actually. Um, the different mechanisms that, uh, that Taraz had and the various mm -hmm. combinations of, of, uh, of uh, machines and gears and different shapes that were in that arm you guys were investigating. And also, weirdly, the uh, designs of the lighthouse um, that were kind of um, unusual, not quite in the same way, but the different mechanisms that, uh, that uh, 
Jonas had put up around the lighthouse to to improve it. Um, it reminds you of that, not in not in the same sort of way, but in the way that he knew how cogs fit together, essentially. Mm -hmm. And it feels as though something is meant to go in here which has a particular purpose, not so much power. I'll tell uh, the professor that um, I'm not sure how protective you are of this place or, I mean, who you let in, but I, I know a guy who would love to have a look at this. Well, I have been And I'll quite... tell him about the lighthouse and how it uses a star stone and how he built the whole thing himself pretty much, but or manages the whole thing himself. And I'll give him the name, too. That's encouraging. I must admit that it's been difficult to find people who I could trust to share this information with. I, I believe that the ring chose you, and I'm taking that as a good sign. Whether this other person is worthy of that, I, well, I have to be careful. There are, there are those who would take this information and do awful things with it, I think. Argenti Sagak st stood for, well, extra planar adventure, yes. They were definitely there to discover and, and explore, but there's also protection in the, uh, the our mission. Protection from the incursion of extra-dimensional forces that have ravaged the world in the past. Yeah, I believe there was some of that going on in uh, Eldfighter not too long ago, but I think it's been taken care of. Yeah, well... I hope. The stories that I've been able to uncover so far do somewhat disturb me. But I hope that I'll be able to um, mitigate some of the difficulties. What is your purpose with all this again? Well, in part, it's to study the extraplanar forces. In part, it's to um, expand the work of Argenti Sagax so that we can once again take our uh, rightful place, uh, earn it, our rightful place in defending Lumetia from external forces, um, mostly to understand this stage. So much has been lost, so much to still understand. So your purpose is to defend the world from outsiders or to learn about what has been lost well it well, can be both both ultimately um what one because... knows can be used to defend but uh not knowing never helped anyone defend anything so are you showing us this to convince us to join your side and leave that who we serve well, because we are charged with making sure that that information is not recalled. You're, I'm sorry, I've misunderstood something. Well, there is information that's not that information that could still be recalled. I mean, many things have been lost, and if, if we've been tasked to make sure one thing doesn't come back, that doesn't affect the other things. Well, there are but many that, things to be found out. But that is why I'm asking. If you're bringing us here to help uncover what happened in the Great Confusion, our job, for want of a better word, is to make sure that's not found out. So are you asking us to stop doing that, or are you okay with not knowing about that, uh, about what caused the confusion. Well, contrary to popular verse, I'm not so certain that ignorance is bliss, but 
some things, perhaps, are best left aside, I suppose. My hope is that because you've been um, selected by the Argenti Sagax, that my mission of understanding our ways would be furthered, and I might have allies in doing what's necessary to protect the world. It seems that whatever whatever was forgotten is necessary to protect the world. But we are not your enemies. Well, I, I should hope not. I, I find you quite enjoyable company, but um, should we find ourselves at odds in the missions that we take, I hope that we can come to a civil disagreement. Well, of course. So you... Again, what is your purpose bringing us here? What do you want from us? I have... Yeah. There's much to tell. Um, come this way. We'll, we'll, we'll seat somewhere where we can have uh, a cup of tea and relax a moment, if you don't mind. And he sort of strides off and starts leading you towards the, the west. You can see that there are uh, there's another small office there. Uh, at least it had been at one point now. Nothing more than broken sticks of furniture. Um, through a place that uh, looks as though it's a preparation area for uh, food into a much larger room where a massive hearth is already blazing. Um, there's a sense, Medric, you get almost from the hearth itself. Um, the sort of sympathetic magic that uh, Ignis provides, it's an ever hearth. It's kind of like an ever flame, only much more mundane nice. in, in nature. Um, but it is meant to burn without fuel for forever. Um, cool. Every Ignian probably would claim that an ever hearth is their domain, but they are known to exist and they are magical creations. Um, but he leads you all over to this area and puts on some water. He seems deep in thought about what to, how to say and what to say and, and so forth uh, and asks that you just sort of take, take a moment to, to relax. Uh, in here you can see there's more, um, more recent elements. Um, the small set of books that are here, again, the map will show a tremendous number of books, but that's sort of how his previous vision had seen it. But the small number of books here seem like they're modern bound uh, much, much more recent. Um, some of them are theoret theoretical treatises. Some of them are um, historical books about different eras about across uh, Omatia. But he busies himself by getting some water, putting on, on some water to, uh, to drink, and in fact pulling out uh, an enormous elaborate pipe. And it's a very long uh, pipe with a, a particular uh, a bowl with a, uh, what looks like a, a dwarven head carved into the bowl itself. Uh, and puts, puts on some, some, uh, some tobacco into it. Um, before long, the water is boiling, and he's poured out uh, small cups. Uh, not of the black moss tea you had before. This one has a sort of uh, greenish tint to it. Uh, it's, it's almost bittersweet, uh, both from its, you can tell it from its smell, as well as from uh, its, uh, its uh, uh, taste. And he Silas doesn't have you. any. Okay. He justice for each of you to sit down, um, takes a, 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 a draft of the smoke and then a, a pull of the the uh, tea as well. It's... Uh, FYI, there's uh, four minutes left. Four, four minutes. minutes. Left. Well, that's a good time to break then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as he uh, prepares to, uh, to discuss. Uh, for those of you who are watching live, um, this is one of the hazards of sometimes using free uh, connections. We will return in just a moment as we reestablish the connection, so please don't go away. All right, we should be back to it. Sorry for the interruption. As we left last moment or so, um, Bitterhorn had taken some of the questions uh, from Silas and the others 
a bit more seriously, and his tone changed, and he felt like he needed a moment to, to compose himself. Uh, he brewed some tea and has given all of you some of that to drink and has drunk some of it himself and gestured for you to sit in these um, rather new-looking armchairs. You get the feeling that when he found this place, there may not have been much of her furniture, especially from the cracked stuff and broken desks and stuff you found not too long ago. These are his addition. This is some of the stuff he's brought in, clearly. I call the one next to the fire. (laughs) Makes sense. And he's got the other one close to the fire. And he kind of stares into it a little bit. When I was young, I began my pathway towards becoming an academic. I read every book that I could get my hands on. Even ones that some people told me I wasn't really supposed to read. They were too complicated, too too sophisticated for my age. And to be honest, probably they were. But they had tales that intrigued me. As I was lucky enough to apprentice to a sage, I learned much more. And then, somewhere along the lines of making my own pilgrimage as a sage... I went across this, and he holds up the the silver ring of Argenti Sagax. I'd never seen anything like it before. I'd never read any reference to it. I had no idea what it was about. And when I put on the ring, I could feel its connection to something greater. I spent a good century just looking for any origins of it. It took me a long time before I found even a scrap of reference. Collected everything I could together. Found that there were very few people who had anything to say. Some believed the story to be a myth or an extra planar invasion itself. Others, others just dismissed it entirely. In my travels, I've collected much. And this is one of the greatest collections. Kind of raises his hands to gesture at the place itself. The very heart of what I hope will be the new Argentis Segex. I've seen disturbing signs in the travels that I've made. Small incursions. Portals that have opened up, releasing horrors into the world. Most of the time, they don't last long, and they might leave something behind. When I heard... Yes? Like the Hungry One. Note to DM and players, did we tell them about the Hungry One last time? I I believe we did. Yes. Okay. Yes, we did, because that's where we found the ring. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. That would be a perfect example of what I had been afraid of. And I've seen this increasingly happening. And then, there was the great confusion, an interruption, uh, a disruption of everything. Small details became larger details, and I started to note them one by one. Others could not confirm what I was finding, aside from the fact that something had changed. And so, And so I determined that I had to start doing something rather than finding something out. When I heard the tale of the Athlonian Titan Arm, that indicated to me that this was a much more important place. The confirmations you've been able to give me have helped to solidify that idea. You see... I know that there is a force working against me. More than one, actually. But the one that you're referring to, that you yourself seem to be attached to, has been most concerning. I do not know the motivation for this force. I do not know why it's doing what it's doing. I do not know to the extent it is doing it. I know that it hasn't attacked me and what I've been doing. It hasn't really helped either. There have been cases where I've gone to a particular library where no one had traveled for 
twenty years in that particular room, dusty and buried and nearly forgotten, only to find that someone had been there just before I had, and removed the one volume I had been looking for, a key volume here, part of a book in another place, scrolls that, that no one had ever referenced. And what's more, some of these places were older than they should be. There was one back room, dusty library and Striendecker, I think. And trust me, there's nothing more than dusty libraries in Striendeck. They are not a people who are careful about their literature. Nonetheless, this room, someone had been cleaning every day, they claimed. Some sort of part of routine, some sort of devotional aspect, I don't know. But when we cracked open the door, we found decay, rot, unaccountable for as though that room had suffered hundreds of years of neglect. So whatever is happening, whatever group you're attached to, whatever they're doing, know that it is not perfect. And know that it's I not think... Really a, it's not really a group, it's some entity. No. And I'll look to my companions, like, sh should we tell them about this? Like, <laughs> should, should we tell them about Catherine? The destabilization that the world has undergone. It is my theory that prior to the Great Confusion it had begun. And following the Great Confusion, we are now in peril. The entire world of Omesha is dangerously close to destruction. And I need to stop that as much as I can. I had hoped that as the ring had reached out to you, perhaps part of its mission had as well. Perhaps I was mistaken. I had hoped that you might be able to shed insight on the planar orrery, that perhaps you'd run across something which might help. Maybe I was wrong. We will stand by your side if to prevent the destruction of Omatia. You can rest assured of that. From, from what I've gathered, the, the entity that we've been asked to help trying to prevent and, and the destruction of the world by making sure that what is forgotten stays forgotten. You mentioned there were uh, terrible things coming in from other planes. If I had to put a theory together, and uh, I've, I, kind of, I kind of have could be wrong but i think there was something that came in it got too powerful something was done to get rid of it now nobody remembers it and the reason we've been tasked to make sure nobody remembers it is to prevent from to prevent it from getting power again well i hope you're right I only know that for my part, I, and he's cut off as the fire from the fireplace burns large and blue for a second. And the whispering sounds of dozens of voices start to fill the air. I don't understand. Something's happening. Silas is looking around to see if we're under attack. Are, are their voices all coming from the fire? No, they or just sort of seem us. to be inconsistent and around you, but not coming from any particular direction. And uh, Medrick, I must must know that a never a never hearth never does that, right? <laughs> that is not its properties. No. no. Yeah. Um, what the hell? Silas is going to detect magic. Okay. A never should not do that. You cast the tech magic Hang behind my chair. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, this is magic. I don't do magic. The detect magic. I mean, first of all, the ever flame is uh, quite, uh, quite magical. Uh, evocation magic. 
Um, you do sense the sort of um, aftermath, almost like the, the lingering smoke of divination magic. Uh, and a little bit of necromancy, actually, as well. It doesn't seem to be originating from any particular point. It's almost like a fog of necromancy that's rolling through the place. Um, uh, Silas will say, since divination and necromancy, is that something from here? You did say there this place are... was immune to scrying, yes? Yes, that's one of the properties I've been able to discover about this place. Many others were built into it, not all of which I've been able to tease out. But I'm, I think, and then little sounds of bells start going off in multiple places. You start to realize that behind or behind some of the books in the bookshelf, there's a little tiny bell uh, in, in some of the, uh, right around where all the lights are you notice that the bottom part of the light is actually a bell that you couldn't quite have seen before because it was immobile. It looked like a part of the light. And they start ringing in all kinds of places. That's that's an alarm bell. And he charges off. Dudek charges off uh, down the hallway to the south. Uh, nope, actually, that's going somewhere else. So he goes the other way uh, and back to the direction you've come. Well, the hammer and uh, shell are coming out. Yeah, let's go. Uh, and proceeds towards the room with the uh, big desk, big table. I'll put the shield on. Um, all the lights in the room start to be uh, start to sort of gush and flash, little little sparks of blue once more. Um, I believe it's some sort of early warning system. Uh, I've been. Uh, I've been trying to decipher exactly what the purpose of the map was and, and how it was supposed to work, but I'm not certain. There, and he points to one of the crystals, uh, the one beside, uh, shoot, wrong page, uh, the one dis beside uh, Daventu that seems to be almost from within sparking a little bit as though kind of, uh, kind of, uh, uh, lit from within by one of those almost flicker candles, the LED flicker candle. There. I think I think it indicates a portal nearby there. Now, I have found some tools here uh, that I should be able to... Yes. Uh, and he takes off again running, this time running uh, down to an area you haven't actually been to yet, uh, down below, kind of where you entered the first time uh, and moving, uh, as I try to scroll, here we go, uh, moving out to the left of the entrance, that hallway, down and around the passage, until he comes to a sunken space. And in here you find a rather complicated looking machine, not entirely dissimilar to what the Auror is made of, but now clearly parts have been replaced, and there's a seat in the middle of it. Um, you can almost imagine it being like one of those, well, if, if you ever went to the mall, and back in the day when they had arcades, there were delightful uh, flight sim arcade games where yes. they had kind of a moving <laughs> cabinet. That's what this would look like in a sort of medieval fantasy way. It's clearly some of the parts are really, really old. They've got that gray-green patina on them, and other parts have been replaced. From what I've been able to understand, this device is able to um, affect the portals. Uh, it's not perfected, but this would be an excellent time to test it. And he kind of climbs into the center. As he climbs in, he kind of uh, puts his hands to the side of the chair that's in there, and you can see on one side, there's actually an indentation where his ring goes, and numerous bits and pieces start to whir around him. Uh, a little illusionary, illusory uh, 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 image forms in front of him, and the whole thing starts to spin around. Now, if I remember correctly from here, Devon 2 is slightly to the northeast. And as he starts to dial it in, you notice the device spinning off in that direction, the image sort of shifting in front of you as well. And there is something, and little little uh, uh, bells start to ring in different places. By now, the overall bells have just sort of faded in the background for you, but they're still happening. Yes, yes, and... There, and in the center of the display, you see this this whirling, swirling greenish uh, blue kind of circle opening up. 
you can see it's very, very large, just above some land. You can see a small village below it. And if this works, these devices are meant to uh, dissuade portals from forming. I should be able to just about this part, and he starts to reach and turn different levers, and the whole thing starts to thrum. I could really use that star stone, if you have it, to boost the power, but I think there's enough residual energy left from what I've been gathering. Uh, there goes that I sword. I think I have it. And you kind of hear in the back there's a box that's sort of clattering around, and it almost sounds like the gnashing of gears. There's a bright blue glow from within the box. Um, it was only a minor magic item, but I think it will power this for long enough. And then uh, he... Question to the DM. Do yes. I have the star stone? Uh, depends on whether you keep it with you or whether you keep it safe. <laughs> no, I forgot, like, if I... Right, because a uh, tree girl, uh, she gave me one. Okay. Yeah, you got a small one from, uh, yeah, from the uh, the dryad in the tree in the Azamunta. Okay. And uh, the other one I gave to, jo to, to, to uh, Jonas, okay. Yeah, and I think you were going to leave that at the temple, though, for the star stone. I'd probably take it with me, because what if somebody like decides to break in the temple? Okay. Or was I using that to do the Everflame? Uh, you haven't got an Everflame yet. Okay. Um, right, you don't actually that. know the rituals to create an Everflame yourself, uh, which is why you sent off messages to the te the Grand Temple. Okay. Um, they so it's with me until the Everflame gets created. Okay. Um, after uh, the very loud grinding sound and the blue flash of explosion from this box... The entire building seems to shake and whir, and the uh, the brass parts around this start to spark with electricity. There, I think I think it's and there's a bright flash. All of you make Constitution saving throws. Okay. I'm pretty sure my con is plus two. Just let me find it. Ooh, what the fuck? Yeah, what's the natural twenty sentence? Awesome. <laughs> it's like the, the entire like for me. last year of bad rolls is changing. <laughs> what was that, Annie? Twenty for me. Dirty. Perfect. Okay. All of you made it. Um you're able to kind of quickly close down your eyes and cover your ears while the loud, bright flash and, and sound of explosions uh detonates in front of you. Is he okay? Uh, after it is over and you're kind of blinking away, you see a, a Dudek at the center of this device. Clearly some of these things have snapped now and broken. Bits and pieces have, have melted. There's sort of a sound of, the, of the whatever mechanism slowing down. The display itself, the illusion, has been dispelled at this point. There. I think that did it. Quickly, to the map room. We have to see if that flickering has gone out. Uh, but your your device, uh, I'll say as I follow him back to the map room. <laughs> I'll be paying a considerable amount to get that repaired soon, I think, uh, as he runs back. And you run back into the room, and indeed, you look at that crystal beside uh, the, the uh, mm -mm, beside Davantu, and it is no longer glowing. But the crystal beside Lithman now shows a very bright spark. Oh, dear. That may not have been exactly as I intended. And the ground starts to shake. Lithman, that's the island we're on, right? Lithman is the island you are on. Ah. Uh, I believe it's here. And the alarm bells continue to, to ring. And now the whispering becomes much more intensive. You catch a worried feeling from the whispering even though the words are somewhat indistinct you all get the sense of a lot of activity happening as though people are rushing to battle stations or trying to figure out what to do next we You're need ready. to check we need to check on this I'm, if it's here I still think the machine can manage to, to close it perhaps even more effectively now that it's actually nearby but it's going to take me some time to make sure that it works enough. Just to see what we're power? dealing with. 
Power would definitely help, but some of the pieces are going to need to be pushed back into place. Possibly even just jammed. All right, I can help with that. And I can lend you a star stone. It's small, but I'll need it back. I can't guarantee I can give it back. The amount of power consumed by this device is um, tremendous. That was a 100-year-old sword that I just sacrificed to it. But we need to see what we're dealing with. And he runs towards the entrance where you came in before. Throws the door wide back into the dusty hallway. And already you can sense a shifting, a changing, an acceleration of winds. There's a scent on the air which is difficult to describe. It it feels a bit like decay, but also a little bit like slimy life. And the winds are carrying and whipping up uh, this, this smell around you. As you get up out, out to the front, you start to catch a glimpse of something just off the shore. It's sort of shifting and turning uh, and uh, slightly glowing, almost as though the it's, it's glowing in this massive fog, which also seems to have rolled in at the same time. And in the center of this is a roiling, twisting, ever-changing form. It's as though a tear has opened up, or maybe the word to use here is an orifice has opened up into space itself, and through it seems to be trying to force itself some unghastly being. From the distance, it's hard to exactly tell, but at this point, it's as large as a ship and getting larger. Small little bits and pieces seem to be dropping out of this into the water, and little tufts of waves can be seen coming towards the shore. Inside. If that gets inside, it will destroy everything. I've got to close it down. All right, uh, maybe we can do something with the Star Stone? Yes, and I'm going to need your help in defending this place. I'm going to need all of my attention on getting this thing back in order. There's some things I need... I can't be in everywhere at once. Back inside, far, and I'll explain. Uh, how far away is this thing? Um, it's difficult to judge distance, especially with the fog and rolling out on the water, but um, it's got to be at least a right. half a kilometer out there. Okay, yeah, it's uh, a kilometer. But, yep. but those things that are dropping into the water are moving very quickly, faster than a boat can move in towards shore. Um, That's not creepy at all. <laughs> So, as he's walking in, um, he walks over to the, uh, to the right-hand side where the undamaged statue is and kind of um, bowing to the undamaged statue. I hope you're still up to this, Odak. He reaches out and presses his palm uh, backwards into the palm of the statue. It begins to move. And there, standing in front of you, uh, if I can get the right button, here we go, is a massive statue uh, made of stone and metal, broken in places. Uh, it seems to have a large shield, but no other weapons whatsoever. Stands almost 10 feet tall. Again, shaped like a dwarf, but but uh, 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 of the wrong size to actually uh, be there. Odak here will help you. One of the perks of finding this ring is discovering that they seem to be bound to certain objects of power. No idea what your ring is bound to, by the way, he asks Silas. Have I felt anything strange? There's been resonances, yes, but the one distinct thing, well, two distinct things that the ring was bound to when you found it uh, was the box and the compass within. Yeah, and the book. And the book, yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's just those. Yeah. Now he says, I haven't sensed anything here that uh, it's bound to, so. Okay. As you think on the compass, as it sort of comes to mind, 
It's about the rise, right size and shape to fit in that empty space in the orrery. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking about that. Uh, <laughs> so, um, just got to figure out if we're joining this guy or murdering him. Uh, oh, we're not murdering him. <laughs> um, I must beg you, friends, if you have the capacity and you're willing to stand, please defend these doors for as long as you can. There are other things that I need to find here, and, well, I need to repair that device as best as I can. I still believe that it can close the portal. I think it's true, but I didn't realize it would bring it here. I am embarrassed, friends, to say so, but time is of the essence, yes? Yes. If yes. you want to leave, well, I cannot stop you. And I would supply you with a door back to my tent. This is fine. Go do your thing. Thank you. My shield bursts into flame as I use up a charge. Got it. Do not die of a heart attack, not expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> if he didn't die of a heart attack when his device blew up, I'm pretty sure he's okay with a flaming shield. Yeah. He also <laughs> knows about Kmar, so it's, it wouldn't be a surprise to him anyway. So... Uh, the uh, the large statue that's there does sort of thunk down. It's very, very slow, but also very sturdy. But again, being up close to it, you can see that it's been in more than one battle already. Uh, it is not pristine. Um, but hopefully it can help. Uh, How tall are these stairs here? Uh, this, like, each individual like... stair is only like a foot height, um, so you're looking at about 10 feet by the time you get to the top. Okay. Right. So, that's, like... That's the end of a hallway, go... which can... Yeah, if, if I were to go down here, can I still see the door? Yes, everything is fairly well lit here. It, it, it's more height-wise, like, I'm not, like, going down, like, an entire flight of stairs. It's just, like... Oh, a... no, no. In fact, the the... The, the the stairs are dwarven made, which means they're a bit shorter than typical human stairs would be. Um, and the way you get the angle, especially when you're that far back, it wouldn't be a problem to see the door. I'm going to go here then. Okay. Um, the bells mercifully seem to have reduced uh, so that that alarm system or whatever it was is no longer active the swirling of uh voices however um especially where you're standing annie you kind of notice a lot of them passing by you and you can make an arcana check if you want i mean i'll try yeah that's actually good that's an 18. Nice. 18? 17 um, plus 1. <laughs> if, you, if you had to guess, again, nothing really substantial for words, but if you had to guess, it's almost as though um, the remnants of whoever had been here, whoever had been serving here, and this place could have accommodated easily a couple of dozen people. Um, there are other, other rooms that he didn't show you, but just from the general size, a couple of dozen people could have easily been here. And it feels like if you count them up, that's how many there are. And it feels almost like you've encountered some ghosts before. This is less substantial than, than ghosts, but still they're they're gathering. They seem to be trying to make an effort. So what other preparations are you going to make while you've got the time? Bo's got coming out. Okay. Um, how did I not get a list for that? Hmm. Pardon me as I look for... There it is. Um, we might as well go ahead and roll initiative because it will come up at some point depending on when you decide to act. Um, Ooh. That's brutal. Uh, my good rolls have come to an end. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I rolled a six on the dice, which is still a 14, but... Wow. And there's me with my plus zero to initiative. <laughs> so you got an 
eight. Oh shit! I didn't select my character and press the initiative button. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's been too long since I rolled initiative. <laughs> yeah, we forgot to too. Uh, I'll AFK like thirty seconds. Wow. Sure, it's gonna take me a while to set up anyway. That that's that. Oh, there's Annie. Like, where's Annie? Oh, way back, back here. there. Gotcha. All right. And what did you roll for initiative? Sorry, thirteen. Uh, I rolled fourteen. Fourteen. Oh, there you go. All right. How much time do you, do we think we have between how fa fast they're coming towards us? Um. Make a survival check. I try to figure out the the relative math. <laughs> Big goof. Ten. Ten? Probably yeah. less than minutes. Okay. So if there are particular things you think you want to try to accomplish, we will be rolling to see if you get them done in time. I have caltrops. I would like to put caltrops at the top of the stairs. <laughs> okay. That's a fairly quick action, so you can go ahead and do that. Um, do you have the stats in your on your caltrops? Uh, it is a bag of 20 caltrops. Uh, of cover the square area of five feet uh must do a dc a 15 uh and take one piercing damage taking this damage reduces the creature's walking speed by 10 feet until the creature regains at least one hit point okay a creature that moves through at, at half speed does not make the save One thing I will do to prepare, though, I'll put the Graveler Orb on the floor and say, okay. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I have two bags of them, so I will put, I'll, I'll just draw. <gasps> There's draw a circle now without having to put, oh, that, that's beautiful. So would it surprise you that I had Graveler standing by? Yeah. <laughs> um, he goes on his own initiative or on yours? Do you remember? I forget. I think he went on his own because I remember yeah. like, yeah. Come yeah. on, Graveler. Uh, w wait, what is? Right. How do I roll twenty? It'd be just his Dex bonus. I forget what is the. Here we go. Character sheet. Initiative. It's all a little awkward to try to remember how to do all these things, isn't it? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay, so you get a seven. Seven yep. point one. He did worse than I did. Wah, wah. Well, that's weird. This is Caltrops, so I'll put them there and then run back to my... There. Okay. Long yeah. time no fight, Graveler. Uh, so yeah, Graveler kind of erupts out of the stone. And there's a moment where the large uh, statue, which... Um, I believe he did actually name it Odak. Yeah. Uh, kind of flinches a little bit as if sort of like... Um, I don't know, he's cool, he's cool. <laughs> who, who is this thing and, and what is it... Uh, what is it doing? Um, but uh, do you have... Let me just make sure you have control over uh, Graveler. Uh, yep. Uh, yep, okay, good. So you can move him as appropriate. Is there any preparation that Silas is doing? Nope. No, he just got his shield ready and ready to go. A plus one boomerang? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. All right. There we go. And the wrong thing selected. Can't do things when you don't have them there. It's 
still don't have an easy way to do all of this. I think my uh, camera's frozen on your uh, screen. Uh, it's entirely possible. Um, I know it's that, frozen uh, with my face like completely out of frame. <laughs> <laughs> Patch was frozen a while ago. Yeah, I can't uh, do much about that, unfortunately. Um, I am here, though, just, just so you know. Ascending. All right. Nope, descending. There we go. Okay. So as you wait there, the ground continues to kind of rumble a little bit, uh, and those voices become increasingly concerned. Uh, it's almost as though they they uh, are, are heightened in concern. You feel them gathering around you, uh, Annie, uh, and it's a little bit unnerving. You're not seeing anything, but you're hearing the voices and feeling them get closer. Um, and the door... Uh, opens only a crack as a small thin uh, tendril sort of pokes out it somewhat resembles a, uh, a an octopus's leg uh, but also seems to uh, resemble uh, just slime that's oozing while the door hasn't opened much it sort of stretches its way in and sort of through the door you see kind of three or four different arms or legs or whatever these things are slide itself through and squeeze through the door um, abomination as you see it there nothing happens immediately <laughs> But uh, it is close up to the front of the door and will make its way through this minefield that's at its feet here. That was a... Sorry, what was the save again on that, uh, Annie? DC 15 deck save. Deck save, okay. Doesn't have anything particular for those, so just a regular plain old roll. That is an 11. So what damage is it? One point of damage... Uh, one, one point of piercing damage, uh, and until it regains hit points, its speed is reduced by 10 feet. Okay. Interesting. All right. Don't underestimate caltrops. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's pretty effective. Um, as you see, one of its, its pseudopods kind of glide down on the ground and then immediately kind of shrink back, uh, and you see one of the caltrops is sort of permanently floating this blubber when it finally pulls its body in, you see just an enormous uh, mouth. But the the weird thing about the mouth is it's not consistent. It's almost as though it's forming and reforming and unforming in different ways. And suddenly there's two mouths and then it's all merged into one. The teeth seem to be uh, at, at times uh, uh, long, almost claw-like teeth. And sometimes they are short and stubby teeth as if to grind. It seems to be trying to change into a form which is not entirely solid yet. Uh, but then it will sort of start to move forward and see, well, see a lot uh, in front of it. Does it see that it's not welcome? It, it, does you it might imagine away? that it does, <laughs> but at this point you haven't seen any eyes. Well, it's going to uh, feel that it's not welcome pretty soon. <laughs> and then it uh, kind of swirls in place weirdly looks like all the limbs are swirling you're not even sure how much it's maintaining contact with the ground and then just sort of belches forward this this sphere of uh, chaotic light that lands uh, basically right there right beside silas it explodes and each of you please make a charisma saving throw oh actually uh, what is God damn it! Yeah, my roll, my, my good rolls are over. <laughs> uh, measure how far that is. Don't forget uh, grappler. All right. Oh, you're just outside the range. As this kind of goes off, and what you see, Annie, is just this cacophony of half-formed lights. It's like a a combination of. A, uh, a water fountain and an explosion. It's bright, it's brilliant, and you imagine if you were standing right there, it could be very, very bad. Um, so, all of you failed. 
uh, DC 14. Um, oh, actually, do, 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 can it be stunned? Yes, it can. Uh, and uh, it fails, too. <laughs> um, so, Graveler, uh, Medric, Silas, and Odak, you are stunned. You find yourselves blinking and unable to really move or form thoughts or do much of anything at the moment. It is confusing. You, it's like an it's like an overload to the brain. Uh, it just is is uh, uh, stressing you completely out at the moment. So it's like real life. <laughs> well, hopefully not. Much much worse. Um, that is it's that, and then. Light comes from fire. These lights do not compute. What do? Um, with the inability, your muscles are not responding, Medric. You watch and are somewhat concerned as it crawls over you. Gross. And kind of starts to suffocate you there. Do not uh, want to. see. That's that one. Uh, Odak's up next. Odak is putting out both of its arms and kind of reaching for anything within range. Um, thankfully, nothing's within range of it. Silas. Uh, I'm stunned, aren't I? Uh, yes. Right. So, in fact, you are basically there for the moment. You do feel it fading, though, as the sort of bright spots of light start to fade from your body and your muscles start to respond. Any. You're muted. Oh, and then... Uh... <laughs> I don't have much I can do that doesn't risk hurting Medric. Shoot my bow at him anyway. Okay. My AC is probably higher than making AC, that. So. <laughs> it will be at disadvantage uh, because you're basically firing into melee at this point. Yeah. Um. Get like an eighteen. I will. Okay, I will use actually my um steady aim to use okay. my bonus action to give myself advantage then. Okay, so it cancels out to oh, a no. regular, uh, regular roll. Oh no! So between between fifteen to eighteen, you're good. Nothing over nothing nothing nineteen or over. <laughs> uh, that that is eleven. Oh. <laughs> uh, eleven. It thunks into the door behind it, and misses. Uh, uh, that's you... action bonus action, and uh, I don't I I don't like this thing. I'm going to oh, I'm going to move it. In roll twenty, and not on the chat. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, here. We ready? I like there. Uh, let's see. Oh, he's still on the wrong layer. Pardon me. Oh, sorry. I can't move after steady aim. Right, that's part of the restriction from it. Um, let's see, they do speak that. The other one starts its tentacles around there, and you see its its tentacles starting to move towards the floor. And there may have been a communication, silent or telepathic, that between them, but it climbs up the door instead and starts to move along the side, completely avoiding that trap. Uh, and we'll move to try to surround Silas as it's a convenient thing. But you're no longer stunned. Uh, wait, stunned, stunned until the end of its next turn. Oh, you are still stunned. Uh, as it tries to wrap you up. Uh, let's see. It does have advantage, but I think either one of those hit, hits. Uh, and tries to bludgeon you. Uh, where is it here? Seven points of bludgeoning damage. And it is now grappled onto you. 
and will attempt to attack again. Okay. And does so, squeezing you for another nine points. As now you see, Annie, both of your friends up ahead have been engulfed by these weird polyp tentacle monster beasts. All right. Uh, and then it is... Oh, it said Silas Marsh. And I was like, why does my creature say Silas Marsh? Oh, it's because he's <clears> underneath <throat> it. Uh, Medric, you are stunned. Unable to do anything. And feeling this creature not just trying to engulf you, uh, you can feel the sort of weird shifting pattern of whatever mouth form it has as it tries to shift to the right form to eat you slowly. It's almost as though it's trying to digest you as it holds on to you. Well, that's you can't, you can't have that, no. Graveler is similarly uh, distressed with his large, way open maw, <laughs> attempting to uh, just sort of eat things. Uh, let's see. This is not a crystal. What's going on? That's that guy. I got them slightly out of order because there's one other named one. Uh, and Odak is now no longer. Nope. Yes. Nope. Still stunned. Wait. Does that make any sense? No. Has to have been his turn already. Odak is not stunned. Odak will move over to where Silas is and Odak reach out smash. and pause. Uh, well, it's going to try to grab the thing, because Smash is probably bad. Yes. It's identified, uh, it seems to have identified Silas and Medric and uh, Annie as not the things to hit, uh, as it attempts to grab. Graveler 2, right? Uh, yes. Although begrudgingly in that case, you get the impression that it's sort of almost professional rivalry. <laughs> uh, strength check. <laughs> Unfortunately, grasp You're fine for now, it. I guess. Yeah. Just still, don't, still my kills. Got my eyes on you. Just don't... Uh, all right, contested strength. Oh, wow. Oh, wait. It has acrobatics. So that'd be plus five. So uh, as it tries to reach out towards it, and you see this enormous paw coming towards you, Silas, uh, it, uh, it is as though the thing sort of skitters around you, using you as cover in a, for a moment. And the, uh, the large creature, large dwarven uh, statue creature is not able to to grasp onto the thing, unfortunately. However, Silas, it is your turn. Well, uh, what are my restrictions? What's it actually doing to me? You are grappled, which means you have no movement, but other than that, there's no other restrictions. Um, actually, I should check on its thing, because it might have a special one, but typically... Nope, it's fine. So you can cast spells. That's good. Yep. Yep, and I can attack. Mm hmm. You and you, all you can't do is move. Yep. Uh, Nine minutes. Okay. Well, I'll go through. I am going to. Where's my tacky thingy? Let's see. I'm going to. to uh, I don't know. I am going to cast, uh, what is it, uh, Booming Blade and smack it with my staff. Okay. Uh, wow. That, that is a One smack. One thunder damage. Uh, well, six, six, uh, uh... It's six bludgeoning and uh, one thunder. Okay. Uh, as your staff kind of lets out a big ba boom. Uh, the creature seems to uh, not like that. Uh, it does not let go, however. It seems to have found a meal it liked. Well, and I am going to use a charge from the ring to cast uh, a 1d4 plus 3 uh, healing word on myself. Okay. So, 5 total. That's all I got. All right. Annie. Hello. Um, I'm going to try to shoot this thing. Which one? The one on uh, Medric um, or, or in Silas? I think Silas I looks will... worse, but he's got things he's doing, so. Yeah. Um, 
know that chances are I'm not going to hurt Medric more than I would hurt Silas. Because I'm not trying to not hurt them either. <laughs> I, I, am just shoot, <laughs> I am shooting at the thing that's on them and hoping that it doesn't hurt them too bad. I, I trust that Annie, it's, if it's she hits me, will also hit the thing that's holding me. So. Exactly. Okay. Just don't better. <laughs> Much better. Uh, that is a... Uh... Oh, man. <laughs> Does that, that hit both of us? I didn't hear the result, sorry. 21. 21 to hit. Oh, 21, okay. For whatever reason, the audio didn't get to me. That is definitely a hit. As the arrow sinks satisfyingly into it and kind of skewers it a little bit. Um, from your perspective, Medric, it's like hitting some je jelly or slime. It isn't quite substantial enough to have flesh, but it did does have a piece of arrow sticking through it now. Okay. Does the damage also apply to me, though? Uh, not in this case. Okay. Okay, that's a bit everywhere. Uh, so that is six. Fifteen. Nineteen. Holy crap. I like how they jump from six to fifteen to... <laughs> ah, rogues, man. Ah, rogues. And then... Not use those Munto's stuff in a while here. Uh, Is this one of your thorn arrows, or? I didn't specify, so no. Okay. I just wanted to make sure not, the the bow itself didn't. The the problem with the thorn arrow is that would so, Medric as well, because he's all in the same space, so. So. With the thorn arrow, those even like the ones that it's just like add extra poison damage or disadvantage oh, right. on that next attack and those ones too. So, okay. um, but yeah, no, I will just okay. leave well, it at that. With the minus 19, uh, a significant chunk of it blows off and splatters against the wall uh, and seems to wriggle on its own for a moment or two, making you wonder whether it is going to come to alive. Uh, come to life. Uh, I'm Not going to great. do their turns real quick. Uh, okay. because oh. we're running out of time for this hour, oh, so we'll be, yeah. we'll be re-meeting in a moment. Uh, and and now I am going to back up to where I wanted to go. Okay. Further moving And backwards. I will, will hide as well. Okay. So, Make a hey. stealth check. Um, well, did you nine. use your bonus action for steady aim? No, okay. Yeah, you couldn't have moved anyway, yeah, so... Nope, so 20, so 29 for my stealth. Yep, you're well hidden. Your friends have no idea where you've gone. Uh, let's Just see. Uh, the one that was on uh, Medric seems distressed to have its food uh, defended. As and, it should be. Uh, let's see. Uh, sure. It's going to launch off of you. As it goes, zleep, launches off uh, and down over the side of the stairs. Uh, you will get an opportunity attack. I will take that opportunity attack. As it I will as well. Pushes off of you. Uh, you're not close enough to it. Uh, it was right next to me before it went off the stairs. Uh, it was right on, on Medric. And there's five feet between you. You're not next to each other. When you moved it, you moved it diagonal. And it was down here, and then moved off to the side. Oh well. For opportunity attacks. Is it like strength modifier plus uh, proficiency? It's bonus, your regular attack. It... Your regular normal straight up attack. Um, yeah, you can go ahead, uh, Silas. Fourteen. Uh, Fourteen hits. A. Hey. D8 plus uh, strength. Twenty to hit for six bludgeoning, and nothing else. No longer able. It takes to... seven bludgeoning. Okay, one at a time. Uh, seven bludgeoning from Medric and uh, six from Silas? Yeah. Okay. 
All right. Uh, yeah, it gets battered and bruised as it comes flying through the air. And it is going to use its action to skitter towards this door over here. Uh, I think it still has a little bit of its move and kind of pushes through the door to the other side. Ten feet of movement for that one. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. Sorry. Do, do, do. Yeah, it still has enough. Uh, it is limping and leaving little gooey spots behind it. So it wouldn't be hard to track if you needed to. Uh, and with that, uh, we will reconnect and reconvene in just a couple of minutes. So I'm sorry for the interruption. We'll be right back. Thank Google. Cat okay. comes back in and she's yelling at the door. <laughs> we are back. Uh, technology. Ain't it grand? Uh, that was that creature. Uh, Medric, you're up. Oh, and naturally, a uh, moment away. Medric, you're up. All right, there was a cat interruption, and there's an ongoing cat interruption. But <laughs> All right, um, the thing that... Oh, it did pass the door. Okay, crap. Yeah, it basically squeezed... A, a, it opened the door only a crack and squeezed through it. There is still one, however, covering Silas. Literally. Yep. I will move to the side real quick. Take a swing at... Carefully take a swing <laughs> at the one engulfing Silas. Okay, disadvantage, because it's engulfing Silas. Wah. That would have been nice. That is less nice. So I guess I. So you kind of pull your your sword at the last minute, trying not to hit Silas, and unfortunately hit nothing. But also, unfortunately, don't hit Silas. Yeah. Uh, Graveler's up. Uh, I am still moving though. Oh, sorry. Actually, um, I get. I think I get a second attack with the fire shield. As a bonus action. Do I? Yeah, I'll do that. So I'll hit it, dexterity to hit, which is like plus zero. Okay, so that doesn't hit. <laughs> Roll again and see if you get a one, though. Nope. Okay, it's not a one. So that's good. That's really good. Uh, as once again, you're kind of trying not to, but this thing is squirming all over uh, Silas, kind of partially forming and reforming. In fact, at one point you notice that the mouth is on the back side of it as well as on the front, and then kind of both of them disappear as if it's partially uh, excited about getting a chance to eat something and partially uncertain about what to do next. Uh, that does make it Graveler's turn, however. Oh, I I'm going to move, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. You did move five feet already. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm, move. I've moved all my movement now. Move is 35? 30. But I was here, and then I moved one. Five. Yeah. Two, oh, three, okay. four, five, six. Yeah. I did uh, count it. You'd have to jump Cause... over the side of the stairs there to do it, so quick athletics check or acrobatics. Ha! Spectacular jump with athletics. No problem. As, you, as you kind of vault Front over flip. it, dramatically looking like a, that, that action moment is there. Slow-mo. There you go. Because <laughs> right. I'm, I'm guessing with the... Uh, Odak and Graveler to help Silas, he'll be fine. And I'm pretty sure this it's a theory. thing is going after uh, the Professor. Okay. Well, Graveler can put that to the test now. Graveler is still engulfed, right? Nope. Ah, fuck. I accidentally closed this window. Graveler no, was not engulfed, fine. he was just stunned. Oh, okay. And he will move towards the thing, engulfing Silas, and hit it carefully, and not right. Silas. <laughs> Thwackadoo. I'm trying to remember how to... Right, so he gets two claws and one bite. So claw twice. Is he hitting at disadvantage? Okay, so 19. 
Uh, he is hitting, even with disadvantage. So that's a solid hit. Big chunk of it flies off. Slash. Then he claws again. Yeah. Uh, that misses. Then he bites. And that hits. Very definite hit there. Nice. Nom, nom, nom. How does it taste? Does uh, this Graveler even care? <laughs> Graveler doesn't really eat organic things. Uh, it just yeah. sort of chews up and... You do, uh, standing next to it, uh, actually you're not standing next to it, but Silas would no. be seeing the, the, the goo and ooze kind of flowing over the teeth of Graveler. Uh, still seem to be moving, somewhat on, the, on their own. It's a little disconcerting. Um, yeah. Is Graveler going to move at all again? No, he's going to make sure Silas is okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. It's turn. What's it want to do? What does it want to do? Um, it is going to, this food is not worth it, so it is going to disengage and leap off of, why is it counting from there? That's weird. There we go. Uh, and leap off to skitter over, and now I've forgotten how far I can go. Uh, uh, too many things. There we go. Okay. So, as I was saying, uh, leap off and skitter over and go remarkably far over towards the stairs. That is its turn. Uh, Odak will lumber after it. Good. Let's see. And that's as far as it gets. Actually, you know what? It'll run. Run, Hodak, run. So it's leaving indentations on the on the floor. Um, the floor probably was good and solid for the first few hundred years it was here, but now it's starting to slowly <laughs> turn to dust. But that's the end of its turn. Silas, you are now freed of the beast. Okay. Well, Silas is going to hold up the uh, the staff and uh, command uh, the one by Hodak to return. Hmm. Okay. It gets a wisdom save. What's the uh, the range on that? Sixty. Sixty feet. Perfect. Uh, and it is a against, uh, wisdom save against a 14. Wisdom save against 14. Oh, these things are incredibly wise. No. Yay. So uh, it halts in its forward progress. Oh, wait. That's a spell. Mm hmm. That's worse. <laughs> uh, as it's. Such a uh, chaos. <laughs> yeah, as it uh, uh, halts in its forward progress, and kind of you see it sort of, it has this weird effect of, of the, the limbs are all kind of moving in different, and now you think, is there five, or is there six limbs, three? It's hard to tell. It keep forming and reforming. And then this sort of wave comes over, it's like, it starts to move backward. Uh, Does Odak get of, an opportunity to attack? Uh, it doesn't move yet, but on its no. turn, <laughs> it'll attempt yep. to move. Uh... uh... See, and that, that was command? Yes. Cool. Let's see. Charge. Um, let's see. Let's try to think of what I can do with a bonus action. It really needs healing. Uh, hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going, uh, Silas is going to uh, walk around the bottom of the stairs and over to help uh, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, before you move, I will point out one thing. It seems mm -hmm. to halt and pause, but mm -hmm. 
but then shiver as if the effect has no meaning to it. The magic went off, but it apparently does not understand what you said. Okie dokie. Doesn't change what I do. Okay. There's a big thing and any over there, so now we get two <laughs> over here, too. All right. So you head over towards the door. Is that yep. uh, all of it, or do you have another bonus action? Or is that a bonus action? Uh, no, I don't get any bonus actions I can take. I need to be one closer. Okay. Annie. You can hear the loud clumping, thumping of this of the of the monster chasing after, or the statue chasing after the monster. The monster doesn't really make much sound. It's sort of if you're very close to it, you can hear the sound of it moving. Okay. Um, from here, I should be able to see the thingy if I go with my my line here. Um, yeah, it's a tricky shot because you're literally firing around two corners. Yep. Yeah, if I. So there will be here. partial cover for it. Um, don't know if you can actually get clear of the partial cover. You're always kind of hitting that corner until you get to about here, I think. Nope. I'm on select, not. So that would be a clear shot from there. Anything else is going to give it partial cover. Okay. Sneak a sneak that way. Okay. Do you want to make a stealth roll to continue to be hidden? That will be your okay. bonus action. Because you've come out of the cover you had been hiding behind and kind of coming into open ground. And that kind of negates the entire point of this, but okay. Well, if you'd fired from where you were, you would have gotten advantage, but it would have been a more difficult to hit. It it, it would have been plus, like, five to AC. Uh, partial coverage so. plus two. Okay. It's up to you I'll which go, way you want I'll to do it. I'll go from over here. Yeah, because if, if you do step out, you are literally stepping out into a place where you can be seen. There's nothing. You can stealth, and then you can use your bonus action to stealth, which basically means you're sneaking forward, but it would have a chance to see you. I mean, fair. Uh, okay. So you take the uh, tricky shot instead. I'm sure you'll I'll send it flying on corners. Because you have an advantage. Yeah. Give you. Uh, so. Uh, it turns out I got a 25. <laughs> turns out you hit it. Not a surprise. And you are hidden, so this does have the effect of sneak attack. Dude is there too, so. It's true. Six. Look at all the reasons. Twelve. Sixteen. So that's twenty and yeah. So twenty damage. Ooh. As the arrow uh, cleaves right through it, that moment of hesitation it had as the magic washed over it from Silas's command was just enough for it to stop in its forward motion for you to pinion part of it to the wall. Uh, it sort of shrugs and releases that part of, it, part of it still stuck to the wall and quivering. It still seems to be in motion, but it is much diminished from where it had been. And I will go to here to hide from it again. Okay. So, 28. Yep, that's pretty well hidden. All right. Cool, cool, cool. That's there. This guy. Let's see where he's going to head to. Uh, I think... I think he's going to book it, uh, if he can. Let's see. Do... Do and then do can you make Which it guy? there? Because uh, I can't no. see the uh roll twenty getting updated updated. Yeah, it's still I'm just doing the path on my screen okay. to determine the length. Uh trying to think of what he has. He can't make it there. 
So. Hmm. Yeah. So it's kind of skittered, skittered along. That's going to be it for its turn. You hear it on the other side of the door, but you did not see it. Uh, Medric. I'll open the door. You open the door. Yeah. Make a perception check. Uh oh. What's my perception again? Plus you have advantage on this roll, actually. I'm going to do it that way. Hey, not 20. There's not 20. Uh, as you're kind of looking around, it seems to have gone hidden. And then you look and you take one step in and you step in some of the goo that's being released by the caltrip still stuck in its tentacle. And you know exactly where it's gone to. Okay. So I'll follow to where it went to. Okay. And I'll dash too, because... Five, six... Damn it. Hold on. Yeah, this is as far as I can get. Okay. So, so as a bonus action, I can okay. do not really anything because I'm too far away to hit with a shield. Curses. But I, I I see where it is now, and it's like... Silas! Yeah. Shoot something at it! <laughs> you get the feeling it was trying to hide a little bit, but obviously given away by its current injury. Um, you call out to Silas. You're talking to the wrong person. <laughs> uh, that's it for Medric's turn. Graveler. Yeah. Graveler is going to stay there. In case any more of them come in. Okay. Kind he of might back out of like... Or anything, or? He'll step down like two or ten feet. Okay. He could hold an action to uh, attack something that comes in. Yeah, yeah, he's going to hold an action. So if, if, anybody comes, if anything comes through the doors, it's going to get smacked. Three times. Okay. Or, well, I guess once, but... <laughs> All right. Because rules. This guy... This guy is not happy with this situation. Uh, let's see. What's he going to do? Uh, I think he's going to have to disengage once more. He's partially clever. Not really. Uh, and skitter up along the wall to move further on down the hallway. Um, as you recall, uh, the device that uh, Duduk is working on is in this room over here. That is the room we absolutely do not want him to get to. Uh, that is his turn, however. Odak. Uh, also kind of thung. Wrong thung. Odak. <laughs> thung. 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 Almost catches up to it. But that's its entire turn. Silas. Hmm. Um... Let's see, let's... So it's not really a blasty type. Um, well, one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll definitely move to there. Uh, he'll yell back at Graveler, scream if anything comes in. Graveler doesn't really have much of a voice. No. Clap your hands real loud. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I do have a thing for this. Reach into a pocket and pull out some rocks. Hmm. Uh, holding my... Uh, actually, leaning my staff against me, and I'll cast uh, bonus action, magic stone, and then his actual action will be to throw a stone at it. Okay. Pitch a stone. Uh, and, uh, Hex isn't up, so just 18 to hit, 7 bludgeoning damage. All right. A solid hit. Two Go more it. stones in his pockets. 
and the stones kind of squish in, and there's a little poof as they explode within with the magical energy. Uh, right in front of you, Medric, and you can see the creature seems to be somewhat concerned about this. Good. Uh, That's all that I got. It's Silas's turn. Annie. So... I'm going to come this way. To, to him, so I'm going to go there, and I'll take a shot at it. Uh, I'm, I am going to use one of the thorns, though. All right, then. Remind me of the effect of the thorn, if it hits. Uh, well, that's a natural 19, so well, that's 26. That's definitely a hit. That's more than a hit. That's beyond hit. Okay. <laughs> it's into the next range of hits. Um, oh. uh, as a reaction to, to hitting one uh, with one of the thorns... Uh, I can do one of a bunch of things. Uh, the one that I am going to do is I am going to reduce its movement by, by 10 feet until the target's next turn. Okay. At the end of the target's next turn. Um, is there a save that... against that or not? I don't think there is. No. Okay. And then the damage. Twelve, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Twenty-one, 21 damage. Oof. As it explodes when the thorns kind of erupt into it, shredding it into small pieces that still continue to quiver, uh, but it does not appear to be existing anymore. Good. <laughs> nice. In a sense. Boom, headshot. Splat. Oof. Pretty much, yeah, uh, pretty much. Uh, as uh, as Odak finally stumbles up to it and then <laughs> at his feet. He's like, Whoa. And then Step I will it. bonus action dash to go that way. Actually, I'm going to go there. Okay. In case something else walks in. Alrighty. Graveler's going to get the aggro. You're good. Um... I take the love in fighter because I've rolled a lot of 19s. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, uh, to get the 19 crit, you'd have to have three levels yeah, to get it's, champion. It's, it's tough, sadly. To um, Annie, from where you are, you see Graveler tense and start to charge towards the door. What? what? Um, there we go. Uh, as Graveler charges towards the door, uh, make the dexterity saving throw. Graveler? Mm hmm. Maybe he's not on our 16. side anymore. 16? Was that yeah, enough for the Caltrops? Yep, no, it's, 15. it's 15. Okay. Uh, kind of managed so to, 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 to stomp carefully within there. Uh, and. Uh, pushes against the door to hold it closed. Um, from what you're seeing, Annie, it's clear that Graveler sensed something. And you do recall that it is able to sense things through vibrations in the ground that right, most Trevor people sense. can't tell. Uh, and has managed to kind of block the door for the moment. Uh, and then, erupting out of the ground around him. Uh, actually, first of all, you hear a unholy sound from the other side of the door. It's the sort of piping and fluting and screaming and screeching and gnashing and gnarling of, of uh, multiple organisms, you might say, all kind of making sounds at the same time as four tentacles erupt from the ground around him and all proceed to pummel him. No. Uh, let's see, starting with the first one. Um, I think he's still tougher than us. So. Yeah, <laughs> better him than us. Uh, let's see, the first one, that's a 20 to hit. Takes 10 damage. 
Mm, okay. uh, he's grappled and seems to be fighting it, but unable to do much of anything. He's also restrained. Uh, second tentacle for 19 to hit. Uh, meets, I think. Let me double check. Yeah, his AC is 19. Okay. Um, for 19 damage. Holy fuck. Third one. 25 wait, 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 let, let me math. Uh, Sorry. So 63 minus 19 is 43 so, plus 1. Okay, so 44. Okay, you got the first 10 damage, right? Yeah. Okay. Third one hits. 15 damage. Okay. And fourth one hits for 24, does 13 points of damage. As you watch uh, uh, Annie, as these tentacles kind of erupt out of the ground and one of them grabs onto, oh, those would have been an advantage too, actually, for the everyone else, but it's all right. It doesn't matter. Um, okay, so he went from 73 hit points to 16 hit points in one round. <laughs> and the rest <laughs> of them kind of bash him in there and then simply move him aside from the door. So they kind of grapple him and kind of move with him, pinning him there. The door swings wide, and behind it is a creature that should not fit through the door, and yet somehow does. It, it resembles kind of like the little ones with uh, enormous writhing tentacles, but this time more like a, a worm-like thing. Um, rather than a, a star-shaped creature of tentacles. Um, it has these tentacles sort of embedded into the ground and is floating over them, uh, not actually touching the ground either uh, and kind of leaving them behind. Uh, it retracts three of the tentacles, keeping the one that's holding Graveler there, and then begins to move in. That's not good. I can check on its range. Um, where are you? Oh, where did it go? Whoops, I didn't make up a sheet. There it is. Okay. Uh, its movement is... So that's only... So as it starts to crawl inward, it almost undulates as if it's uh, moving on uh, another plane of existence. And as it sort of spots you there, numerous eyes open up in different locations. One arm starts to spread out towards a claw-like shape, and it starts to sprout limbs as necessary. Uh, let's see. At that distance... Uh, Okay, at that distance, it's all it's going to do for now. But this thing is enormous. It's got to be at least uh, 15 feet wide, and it's impossible to sort of say tall because it's more like it's coming from all directions, uh, gradually sort of flowing in. Uh, actually, Annie, make a wisdom saving throw. Uh-oh. Because this thing is very horrifying. Sixteen. Sixteen. That's enough. You do feel the sort of corrosive version of the surreality of this thing. It's as though as it moves through, it's eradicating reality as you knew it. But you ground yourself. How does Annie ground her, grind herself? Ground herself. Is there is there some memory she uses or some physical action she uses to kind of keep hold of herself? I can't fucking die here. It's basically. <laughs> <laughs> I am so dead if I don't get home. Yeah, my parents gonna say, "God damn, fuck you, chaotic." I am so energy. dead if I don't get home. I like that. Um, Quote of all the right. game. <laughs> um, that is its turn. Uh, this guy up here is still alive and still going to be trucking along. Uh, as fast as he can. So, uh, Medric and Silas, you think, see the thing sort of 
rush all the way forward to the other end of the room and up the small stairs. Uh, you can't see it. It's too low to the ground, but you know roughly where it has gone. Medric. I'll follow you it. You also heard the door slam open behind you. Yeah, I did. So I will yell across the hallways. It's coming around the other way. Referring to the one that's trying to. You get in. I'll see what's happening at the it. door. Okay. We have bigger problems out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Silas, did you say I should chase it? Or? Yeah, he said keep going. I'll I'll go okay. back and check the door. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can I see it from here? Um, make a perception check. See if you see some of its roiling limbs just peering above. Unfortunately, no. Fuck it's six. too low to the ground it's for gone. you to make it out. <laughs> I'll go a little closer. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do I do I see it now? Wait, no, I, I can't attack anyway, but. Uh, yeah, if you as soon as you run around the corner and kind of at, at this point, you'd be able to see it, and then you can run right up to it. Okay. If you got Bonus that action. movement, shield bash. Okay. Eight. Uh, unfortunately, eight misses. As you're kind of like running up the stairs, and then you misjudge slightly the distance, and it kind of squirms and squiddles out of the way. Okay. Uh, that's your move action and bonus. Graveler. Graveler is restrained. Graveler is in bad shape. <laughs> so Graveler is going to try to break away. Okay. Is that like a straight up strength check? Or? Uh, that is an escape check. Yes. So it would be athletics Hurrah, or... It, one. it does not escape. It does not escape. He finds himself squirming and slightly lifted off the ground. Damn it. it so he's losing kind of traction as well. Can it, can it like punch the thing holding him? Uh, it is restrained, so it does yeah. not have... Um, All three arms? Jump. Um... I feel like that extra arm should be, should be like a bonus for the, ac the action to get The action to get free would be... Oh, that is an action, yeah. To... Okay. So, yeah, it is an action to get free, and unfortunately it's squirming and using all of its arms and limbs and everything it has, but unable to make any purchase. Curses. So it's there. Odak. Odak does not have a clear target. Doesn't really understand what's going on here. And will attempt to understand what's going on here. Let's call it that. You got this, Odak. You're, you are a smart. Yeah. Oh, hey, smart enough. It knows that the front was the dangerous place, so it will try to run on back. Do 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 do. And gets there. Kind of. Trung, trung, trung. So, Annie, you hear this enormous sound from behind you, and I would imagine the welcome scene, uh, the welcome sight of this enormous uh, guardian uh, coming trundling around back. Uh, even as large as it is, the creature is still uh, is larger than it by a considerable amount. But this thing doesn't seem to know any fear. Like, literally doesn't know fear. Um, Silas. Uh, let's see. The Silas, one, two, three, four, uh, looking through the door. You can clearly see it. Make a wisdom saving throw. Thing. Yeah. Ah, come on over here. And you are Six. afraid of it. You now have mm -hmm. the frightened condition. I'm not going any closer. Um, can I see, uh, Graveler? Uh, make a perception check. He's kind of wrapped up in a tentacle and kind of off to one side. Yeah. You may be able to see him. Yes, you can just 17. make out Graveler within the pile of tentacle. Then I am going to use the ring to cast a healing word on him. Okay. Um, I'm assuming the range is plenty there. Yeah, heals four. All right. Graveler, if you could, is appreciative. Uh, I still haven't 
action. If I can see Gravler, can I see the thing wrapped around him? Yes. Am I afraid of it? Yes. You are inherently okay. aware that it is a part of the creature. Well, I'm going to fling a stone at it with my action. <laughs> okay. Uh, stony, stony stone. Here we go. 15 to hit for four that bludgeoning. Hits. And the stone has an effect. Woohoo! And that's... Uh, yeah. I'm gonna come back around the corner here so they don't see me. Because they're scary. And that's it for me. Okay. lined up here properly all right uh annie you saw a stone fling from the other hallway and you presume that might be silas or somebody else you know <laughs> but this creature is moving forward into the room defying the other weird thing is as you notice it moving it's almost as though some of it is moving in from another dimension as it sort of twists and turns and regurgitates itself weirdly enough it's gross. I want it out of my face. I use steady aim to shoot things at it. All right. Um, yes, a thorn. <laughs> okay. Uh, to hit. Uh, just a second. A 20 does hit, yes. 17. Okay, 17 damage. No, 17 to hit. 17 to oh, hit. sorry. I was <laughs> one step ahead of myself. Uh, 17 uh, hits, actually. Okay. You are not hidden uh, from it. Oof. So, and there's no allies nearby. Um, I got steady aim, advantage, so I had advantage. So, yep, that works. So you took your deep breath. Okay. <laughs> Gotta get home. Gotta get home. <laughs> um, There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like Rome. That is good. <laughs> Good. Thirteen. There is three. Um, and it will. Give me two seconds. Uh. Uh, I used. I am going to use that to cast Hill of Thorns on it. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm going to give a disadvantage on its next attack. All right. Close Probably to it and just idea. hurt it. Okay. That that is my turn. All right. So as your your arrow kind of centers in on the center of this thing, it's hard to really tell if there's one particular center or not. It erupts inward and little spikes of thorns shoot out in all directions, many of them snagging on the flesh itself. Um, sorry, what was the total damage? 23. Nice. Um, shredding bits and pieces of it. There's a large pile of goo kind of around it now where it's, it's sort of exploded outward. Uh, it's piping and uh, uh, ovulating kind of intensifies. Um, you think that it's probably upset. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's its turn. Okay. Let's see what it's going Wonderful. to Wonderful. Um, it's, it has disadvantage. 
Good. Throws its tentacles into the ground, which go burrowing out in three directions. Um, one appears beside uh, Silas. One appears beside Annie. And another appears beside Odak. Uh, the attack on Silas first. As it attempts to strike at you. Ten. Uh, you are frightened. It's his it. next that attack that has, has disadvantage. Uh, disadvantage. So, it, so it, it misses either way. All right. That yeah. You feel this sort of rumbling by your feet, uh, Silas, and just barely step back out of the way as it erupts from underneath you, throwing stones everywhere. Uh, in your fright and in your, uh, your anxiety, it, it manages to give you just enough jitter to get out of the way. Uh, the one against Annie... 22 to hit. Oh, it hits. 10 points of bludgeoning damage, and you are grappled. Uh, against Odak, um, 16 misses. Hmm. It manages to not collide with, with Odak, uh, despite the fact that it's bigger. That's kind of hilarious, actually. Uh, now it's turn. Odak strong. Odak strong. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Uh, where are we here? Uh, what's the one? There it is. Doesn't need to do that. Doesn't need to do that either. Um, I think it's just going to move forward, actually. Oh, wait. It has one more attack to make, which is against uh, Grappler. Or Graveler, sorry. Which it makes an advantage because it has him grappled. Still 22 hits. Another eh, minimum damage. Seven points. Or fairly close to minimum. Seven points to Grappler. Uh, Graveler. Grappler's like looking like shit. <laughs> uh, and I think it's going to move a little bit forward and it's dragging with its its other tentacle actually no sorry it's going to hold the tentacle there because it's in the ground and I think that's its turn uh, actually no it's close enough to the big guy that it is going to take a swipe at him as another limb this time with a large hook on the end uh, reaches out towards uh, the massive Odak. Uh, 19 does hit. It does that. And does that. So, oops, it didn't do the first damage. God damn. Yep. So, well, the massive hook collides with the armor of Odak, putting a massive hole in it. And then there's a sort of thrusting, oozing, pumping from the, the limb itself as acid seeps into uh, Odak's armor. So it does a bunch. You can see Odak starting to come apart of the seams from where you are, Annie. Uh, that's its turn. Uh, this guy. Oh, this guy's still alive. As the little... I'm going to have to zoom out on the map here so people can see the craziness that's happening all around every direction madness ensues there uh, as the little guy still next to somebody but also still disengaging damn it uh, will try to do his best to get away Medrick it... needs to pick up the sentry feet <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, Mark has learned to use disengage. It's very, very good for creepy little enemies. Uh, but that is his entire turn, as it's once again trying to run away from you, Medric. However, it didn't get that far this time. But the door's still it'll, closed, right? Uh, the door is slightly ajar. It kind of pushes it about an inch or two open and then slides okay. through. So if it's ajar, then I can just like push it out of the way. One, two, three, four. Yeah, the doors are usually an interact action. So it doesn't right. cost you anything. I am next to it. You are. 
I take a swing. You have. You missed. I take a swing with a shield. Okay, that, that's, that's a hit. There we go. So that's 1d6 plus 2 fire damage plus As my the mace doesn't bonus. connect, and then you drop the shield down on its head. And... It takes 6 fire. Well, not so much head, I suppose, but... Uh, onto its pseudopods, once again sort of pinning, this time cutting off some of the some of the rear pseudopods uh, as uh, they get wriggling uh, at your feet and hissing, and there's an acrid kind of smoke burning from these things, but it's still alive. Still Damn alive, it. weirdly enough. All right, so if I use the shield, it's like half the damage to me, So and I got fire resist, so one quarter. So just do I just take one? Uh, yes. As it kind of blazes upward. That's Medric's move and action. Do you have a bonus? Oh, no, you did the nope. bonus with the shield. I just used it. Graveler, still restrained. How do I keep shutting off his window every single time? <laughs> <laughs> Graveler breaks free! Does he? Ooh, no. God damn it. Not with the five. Graveler so angry. Graveler, Graveler still sad. kind of caught up in this. Now there is sort of a, a sound. It's not exactly a call. It's more like the grinding of stones as he's sort of gritting his teeth and, and trying to desperately get himself free. But or the collapsing of stone. <laughs> before, yeah, or collapsing. Um, Odak. Odak chooses to go after the big thing rather than the small thing because it's got some logic in it. Good. Uh, the tentacle will get an opportunity attack, though, as it passes by it. And the tentacles act as separate beings in the sense, so they it's just the tentacles' reaction. That misses. And uh, now, finally, Odak gets to unload. Uh, let's see. But it has no weapon, so it's using its fists. Uh, I think that hits. Yes, it does. Unloading. Please wait. Unloading. Unloading. And bashes into the creature for an enormous eight points. Uh, it it sort of absorbs the hit in a weird sort of way. Uh, it's a little dis disconcerting, but not to Odak. It doesn't care. It strikes again for another ten points. Both solid hits, and uh, that was not what I wanted to do. I meant to hit minus, not just ten. Um, both solid hits, but again, this thing seems amorphous. It does seem to be paying attention to Odak, however, so that could be bad. Uh, so, Silas. Well, Silas has it exactly where he wants it. <laughs> First, Silas casts Hex on it. All right, it is Hexed. Because he can see the tentacle and there's no save. Uh, and... It gets one of its stats uh, disadvantaged, not for attack rolls, just for skill checks. So he's picking strength. So okay. opposed strength rolls, it's going to be at disadvantage. Nice. Uh, and then he's going to Booming Blade, because Hex is a bonus action. Okay. It is at disadvantage, because you're still afraid of it. Yep. Uh, where's that? Yeah, that's it. Eh, no, that's a miss. Yeah, unfortunately, it seems to be moving around in an unnatural way, which kind of makes you jitter a little bit. No problem. Uh, do I get a save to get rid of the fear? Yes. Okay. Wisdom. It is a wisdom save again. 17. Uh, 17. You have overcome your fear, at least temporarily. Yay. Uh... That's all Silas has got. He's not, or he can't move or anything. So, okay. Or no, he, he wasn't grabbed. He could move, he was not but grabbed. it's not going to. Right. No, he's staying there because I'm not giving an attack of opportunity. All right, Annie. Um, grappled, which means my speed is zero. Which you know, uh, I stay if you're still. you by this lot. thing, it's actually you're actually restrained. So it's a bit more than speed zero. Bold. So, uh, okay. Silas will shout out that uh, 
I've weakened it. <laughs> I am going to grab Vice. Okay. And I will do a try to hurt it. Okay. Disadvantage to hit it. Um I'm gonna use So for a steady aim there's no restrictions on anything. It's just if you don't move as long as you don't move you can use your bonus action. Mm-hmm. And so. is it uh, ranged only, or is it any attack? So, it's action. Any. It's advantage on your next attack roll. No on problem. On your current there. turn. No problem at all. So it's just a straight no, roll. Perfect. Then. Yeah. It won't get rid of the disadvantage though, so uh, I don't think you can sneak attack it. No, no, but it's still. Yeah. Hitting. Stabby. Spice, spice, bro, spice. Uh, that is us. Jeez. You used roll 20 on my computer in a while. <laughs> Same. Understandable. So 17 plus 7 is for 24. 24 to hit? Gonna, oh, yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to guess that hits. Oh, yeah. Um, I still get, um, it has been injured. Mm-hmm. So... Actually, sorry, this tentacle has not been injured. It hasn't? Nope. Still has all no, I don't think we've hurt it yet, other than the... Well, the big, the big guy smacked around the main body. Yep, but the tentacles are effectively individual creatures for this. Okay, so they just count as connected for some things. Yeah. Okay. Kind of imagine okay. uh, uh, certain squids have brains on their tentacles, essentially. So it it is considered is it considered a separate creature or not? Because that's what is by for the most, creature. For yes, it will be considered a creature. So then I rolled two fours, so uh, okay. that would be eight damage. Then all right, it's a solid hit, and you see that it's not it's, it's not nearly as substantial as the main creature itself. Um, but it does, doesn't do much more than wriggle around you, but you do make a large gash that sort of oozes green-blue. I just want to make sure I haven't used that in a while. And that's my turn. Okay. Uh, let's see. That is the main creature. Main creature not happy with thing in front of it. Main creature going to go and try to destroy that thing. But first, the tentacles. Oh. I just noticed, but we got five minutes left in this section. Yeah. Um, well, rather than start its turn and have to do all the calculations again, uh, I'm going to pause for a moment. We'll restart the call. So everybody, right. please stand by. Right. It looks like we are back. Sorry for the interruptions, folks, but that's the nature of this game anyway. Uh, so uh, the monster is about to take a big bite out of somebody. Uh, let me see if I can focus a little bit more on that so that everybody can see the big bites happening the turn order thing has just decided to be in the wrong place all right um starting with the tentacles one a tentacle attack against uh silas as it attempts to engulf him 21 to hit Eesh. and 16 points of damage oh oh jeez a nasty hit against uh, Silas. Uh, against yep. uh, Annie, it will attempt. But misses. Oh, wait, it's got advantage. There's still a chance. Okay, it hit you. It was awfully close there for a second. It's like, why can't I hit the thing I'm already holding? Uh, 13 points of damage. And miss moving the other tentacle up behind this big creature. Yes, I'm below half. Uh, and misses. Wow. 
Odak for king. This is great. Uh, that leaves the big creature itself to take on Odak directly and decides to, once again, fire out an arm with a vicious-looking hook at the end, hoping to spur. Uh, and misses. Wow. That was not a good round for the bad guys. Oh, and one more. Sorry, the other one on Graveler. Does have advantage. What's gra No, that doesn't hit at all. Wow. Whew. Total whiff from the bad guys. You guys are back on the table. Uh, Medric. The one, uh, the half the attacks hit. I don't think it was a total whiff for the bad guys. Oh, I, I mean, but it hitting Didn't me made me, me below half, so that means Vice does extra damage. Mm -hmm. That's right. Didn't that tend to, uh, didn't like slimy creature go before me? Uh, I think he's, he skipped his turn, which I'm okay oh. with because I can just smack him. But <laughs> did I skip his turn? Yeah, I did because uh, oh, that's weird. Oh, he, that's why. I, as you can probably see from the tracker, I gave them interesting names as for creatures who are from another dimension, and I wasn't even reading my own names. All right, so yes. Uh, uh, well, from the tracker, all we see is the pictures. Oh, really? We don't see the names. Oh, okay. I see. I'm we see the names horror, when the uh, the tentacle. damage and stuff comes up. Well, the big creature is named M N B W E Q R. Oh. And the little creature is I H A E F K L H. What? And this one is once again doing its uh, darndest to get away. Still, uh, still disengaging. Still kind of uh, sloughing along. And now coming within range of the room. That's where, still, you bastard. Uh, Dudek is still working on his business. But that does bring us around to Medric. I'll use my full movement. Whew, I just barely made it. And I will smack with a hammer. All right. Hammer, hammer smack time. In. in three, two, one, hammer smack. Non natural 20. That's a hit. It is. Poof. It takes and there it is. Ten damage. Finally, you catch up to this thing. It's been sort of running slightly ahead of you each time. And now it is no more as it smashes into small little gooey bits that continue to throb and uh, move and quiver and possibly still form uh, little teeth that try to gnash at the air and what just hit it. But well, it tries to gnash at my boot, so I fling it across the wall where it splatters and, well, to metric satisfaction. Splatters slightly Damn. staining and possibly burning the wall that's there. Damn. Uh, that's Medric's uh, move in action. You still have a bonus. I'll yell to uh, Dudek. Um, how's it coming along in there? You hear a, a nasty clang. Almost. I think I'm missing something, though. I, if you I, happen I to see a part which is sort of L-shaped... That's a little callback to another game. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's Medric's turn. Graveler, still caught, still bound, still slowly Graveler being crushed roll. to death. Break free! Now, there yes. we go. There it is. He is successful in breaking three. Free. He is now free. Was that one action? Does he still get two attacks? Or That is his action, which is oh, all of man. his attacks. And if he walks away, then the thing gets an attack of opportunity. So he's just going to stand here and, like, just wind way up to punch it with three hands when his turn comes back up again. Okay. Kind of brushing himself off and... <laughs> Trying to pick up pebbles from the floor, put it back on, on his shoulders, on his knees, you know. <laughs> These are mine. These are mine. My bits. Well, let's <laughs> see if the if uh, Odak can do something for you. Uh, Odak is face-to-face -face against the thing. Um, it is just going to try to pummel it. That is a hit. That is not a lot of damage, but it is some damage. The creature uh, is worse off than it was before. It is worse off. It does it again. And once again, a pummel. Ooh, good rolls. Boom. And slightly more, less embarrassing damage. <laughs> Actually, the creature is, uh, looking significantly, uh, um, Weirdly battered and bruised, but not in the way that no that normal creatures do. Instead, there are sort of 
openings in its in its uh, writhing body, which it has not closed. You take those to be permanent wounds. Odak will not move. Silas. Okay. Well, since I'm all caught and stuff, uh, I am going to try to smack it again. Okay. Uh, I've been damage. making the con saves. Uh, the hex is still up. Okay. Uh, 14. 14 to hit. Uh, that hits. Okay. So that's nine bludgeoning, one thunder, and two necrotic. <laughs> so as you are wrapped up in this tentacle, which has been writhing around you, you kind of focus inward, and kind of this big boom from the midst of this this uh, wrapped up tentacle hap uh, occurs, and it bits and pieces of it go flying in all directions as it is destroyed, and you are released, covered in goo, but you're you're alive. Cool. Sorry, uh, did my hex affect the whole creature or just the tentacle? Just the tentacle. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, I will move there. I, I'll move until I can see the tent uh, that tentacle uh, with Graveler. Uh, yeah, you can see it from there if you just Actually, need to see it. Yeah, uh, I'll move up to there because I'm not afraid of it anymore. That's true. Uh, and with a bonus action, I will move the hex over to the big guy. All right. The uh, guy the main body. Now hexed. Let's call it this one. And that's all I got. All right. Well, that's a lot. Annie. Annie, are you okay? I think yeah, you're muted. Yep. <laughs> uh, I will want to try to do the stabby stab. All right. Again with the tentacle. The standing still. Uh, 18. Uh, is that with the disadvantage? That's with using my oh, using the steady. standing still. Uh, yep, yes. you hit it. Been damaged, so and I am at it minus. Has been damaged. And, and I am below half of my hit points, so. So it's a brilliant gleam from Vice. Oh, that is. Edge and then. Sorry, how much was that? Uh. Force damage, and then seven regular piercing damage. Okay, I still missed the force damage. You cut out just at the wrong time for me. Four? Okay. Four and seven? Four and okay. seven. <laughs> does, it need, does, does force need to be separated? or? No, I just didn't hear the number. You kept cutting out for me at that point, which is frustrating. Um, as you dig vice deeply into it, and, and create a ragged, jagged slice of it. It's almost like you're slicing a roast beef. Large chunks are coming off of it, and only the tendril core of it remains. It is very badly wounded, but it is still wriggling forcefully. It's all um, good. It is all good. That is me. That is it for you, and now it is time for it. Uh, let's see. It's going to try to recapture... Uh, well, one of the tentacles is going to try to recapture Grappler because it's there. Uh, 23? Yeah, that gets him. And 15 points of bludgeoning damage. He's now grappled once more. Yeah, he's uh, got 13 hit points left. I'm not sure if he just, like, disappears entirely or <laughs> does he come back into the orb later on? Haven't faced this particular problem. No, we haven't. Uh, the tentacle is going after Odak. Uh, Odak, oh, it hits it with a 24 and delivers a significant hit to as the tentacle buries into the back of Odak, wriggling deeper and deeper and deeper, Odak's form starts to shiver and shake and then from within is blown apart. Odak is no more. No. That's two constructs in a single round. <laughs> uh, and finally, against Annie. 
21 or a 23. 11 points to Annie. I will use Uncanny Dodge to have that. Uh, do you have to be free to move? Because you have no movement right now. Mm. Just have to see it coming, as far as I know. It's one of those. Uh, when when you see it coming, you can use your reaction to have the attacks damage. Okay. It's one of those uh, weird, weird edge cases I got to look up, but I'm going to let it go for now because that was a pretty nasty hit. Uh, as it no longer has. Hmm. It no longer has a visible uh, thing in front of it, but it does know there's a source of power which is disrupting it right now. And it tromp, tromps towards Silas. Uh oh. Ah, crap. Uh, and this time it will be extending its nasty looking limb with the uh, hook on the end towards Silas. Uh, 13 misses, I think, though. That was a terrible roll. Good. But you do see it sort of collide with the wall, taking a large chunk out of the wall as it as it spits out this pseudopod with a hook and then reabsorbs it. And it's not even visible after that. Uh, Medric. Yo. Do I see an L-shaped piece anywhere? <laughs> uh, not in this space. All right, well, it's going to have to. you can search whatever space you're in to find it. That'd be an investigation roll. That'd be your action for the round. Yeah, yeah it seems like we can look for that later. Uh, th this here, is it like a barrier? It's a wall. Okay, fuck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'll dash all the way over here, I guess. That's okay. all I can do. And from there, you can just see bits and pieces of the destroyed Odak. Damn. He could say that when you come around, it's a little bit disturbing. It's like a picture. It's like an Odak moment. I didn't really mean to plan that, but... but yeah. <laughs> uh, Graveler can try to get free. Gravel, Graveler's or, dead. Graveler's... No, no, not Graveler's not dead, is he? Yeah, he had 13 oh. hit points and he got hit for 15. I didn't realize that he was actually out. Okay, well, Graveler will go out of the initiative then. Um, well, we'll just move that way. Odak. Odak is not there. Silas. Oh, wait. Does, does Graveler get death saves? Um, no, because he's Named. a summoned entity. He's not a, he's not a, he's not a being. Crap. Well, on the upside, if he's a summoned entity and not an actual be like, living being, then he's probably coming back tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> you hear the stones crumbling and the sound like, I'll be back. <laughs> Except in, in Graveler's tongue, it's sort of like... Yeah. <laughs> okay. The big creature now has... Or you have its attention. And it's really yes. big. And you remember, you were afraid of this. Maybe there was a good reason. No, I'm that. not. You were. You remember Well, I were, afraid. yeah, yeah. You were. I am no longer. I mean, um, if I was looking at it, I'd be afraid of it, too. So. Yeah. You maybe had Let's good reason to be afraid of it. see. Well... First thing I'm going to do is cast mirror image. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> That's my action. Then uh, I'm going to uh, use the ring again to healing word myself. Uh... Plus three, yay! Seven total. Uh, plus seven. And that's it for me, because uh, I'm not uh, I'm not running away from this guy. All right. He'd murder me. Uh, it might be the intent either way, but we'll see. Uh, Annie. Hello. Hello, hello. Mm -hmm. Um... I will, once again, stabby stab with vice. Center myself. Me, you fucker. <laughs> uh, I'm sensing hostility. Um, I don't think these tentacles are your friends. No. Uh, so that is... Oof. Seven force damage. What, did and you then the hit? six... Was the
did you? I didn't hear a roll to hit. Sorry, it may have cut out. Nineteen. Okay. Yep, that hits. And indeed, the little the the, uh, the last cut you you do severs that whatever jelly center it happens to have, and the thing flops to the to the ground. Literally, it had one hit point left. It was so close last round. Uh, but you are free now. You're covered in goo and gore. You're somewhat crushed. There's lots of internal bones that probably should be straightened later. Yep. Uh, I currently cannot move because I used my movement as steady aim. It's true. So I will stay here for now. All right, then. Good plan. Uh, it is time for M-N-B-W-E-Q-R. <laughs> Sounds like a radio station. <laughs> uh, let's see what it's going to do. It lost another tentacle. It does not like losing tentacles. Uh, let's see. The one that was beside um, Graveler, satisfied with its meal, is now going to disappear for the moment. Uh, the one near Odak also disappear for the moment and standing in front of Silas it will attempt to strike at you uh, let's see here uh, no nah, wow uh, natural yeah, does, one does Suck not it. hit uh, unspeakable it's, horror it's too it's too uh, intent on its uh, on its uh, on its extra limbs at the moment um, you do get the intent, the idea, though, that perhaps it's retracted its uh, extra limbs or its pseudopods to use them soon. Uh, that is its turn, actually. Medric. All right, I will. Am I muted? No, I'm not. Okay, good. Nope, you're good. I'll use my full movement to go next to any. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm too far away to do anything, but I will give Annie a heal of. Reach out and cure someone. Yeah. So level three. Cure wounds, 1d8. No. 3d8 plus, okay. I think my modifier is two. I forgot to update my sheet. Like on, uh, on roll twenty. Your wisdom I mean. bonus. Oh yeah. And he gets sixteen hit points. Woo! Nice, good heal. Below half. A little bit of fire flows over Annie and seals. Oh crap! Were you supposed to stay below half? <laughs> yeah, but it's fine. I also don't want you to die, so I'll get <laughs> these down things there are pretty hard. Okay. It's one of those. <laughs> it's probably my next turn. Yeah. All right. Uh, that is your move and your yeah. action. No bonus? Yeah, I have a bonus action, but I, there's nothing near me for me to hit the shield with, so, or Great. hit with the shield. Passing by Graveler and Odak to Silas. Maybe it's the small hallway. Okay. It just doesn't really have a great aim, or, or you're not as big as the other thing was or something. It takes a wild swing and it hits the wall. I was surprised to come around the corner and find four of me. <laughs> um, I am gonna smack it. Uh, that Twenty-five to hit. Uh, so that's twelve bludgeoning, four thunder, and two necrotic. Woo! Uh, I just gotta check so, something. Yeah, eighteen total. Uh, yep. Stop mur attempting to murder my friends. <laughs> um, can I go back and cast a bonus action? Um, no, well, we you don't need to cast a spell. Yeah, you couldn't anyways. cast a oh, okay, spell okay. anyway. All right, so. never mind. Yep. Uh, that is a, um, is a rounding hit, and you see now there's this weird dissonance within it where the the holes that were within it have gotten large to the point where some parts of it are disconnected but still seem to be moving as if they are connected. Also, it is now surrounded with sonic energy. Sonic. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I will. Um, we'll move there. Uh, 
Okay, he's going to take a dip out of the ring again. Uh, almost out of charges, but not quite. For a healing word for six points. Uh, and then... Six. And then he's going to move back. Out to, well, I'm gonna move back to here. Okay, just there will in case. be a, a, a opportunity attack. Yep. As it strikes out with its limb, seventeen to hit. Uh, I'm going to use the reaction from the shield to increase my AC to nineteen temporarily. Nice. Uh, just against the one action. Okay. Uh, as it kind of, uh, yeah, bounces oh. off the shield. Holding your own against this is pretty impressive. I like it. Annie, you're up. Hello. Um, well, I can move again. You can. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am going to my uh, switch back to, to my bow because I don't want to get any closer to that thing. Thorn, and I will remember, stand still. Remember, there's a big statue there too, right in front of you. Yeah, it's or basically not it's off. collapsed statue, but there's okay, one there. Cool. Stand still and uh, sorry, I didn't hear it. Whew. Womp womp womp. Nat twenty. That's a nat twenty. Oh, there you go. This is going to get dangerous. Uh, Let's see how how much this totals up to. Roll all ones, because that would be hilarious. That would be. Uh, so that no. is 5d6. Plus 5d6. For the thorn. Um, the d4 poison damage. Roll all the dice. <laughs> okay. I can barely hold them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are good numbers. Okay, so that is another five. No, but there twenty. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, forty-two thing, and then five poison. Okay. Uh, let's see. That would be more than three times the hit points it had left. So please tell us all how this how this happens. How do you dispatch this creature? Slightly panicked. <laughs> <laughs> Um, did you once again take your, did you take your deep breath once more? Breath, yeah. Okay, so probably there's a whole lot of shallow breaths, and then suddenly, and, and then, then release, and the arrow flies, you and you this. think it's going to fall right through one of those holes that's been created in it because it's it's almost impossible to to hit anything solid at this point, and then it just at the last minute it twitches slightly as it's throwing its its limb out towards uh, Silas, and as it bounces off of Silas's shield the arrow connects and then from within there's this bubbling of energy uh, and the creature turns and twists and you get this rumbling sound from underneath the ground as it's trying to summon its tentacles to defend itself but at that point it's too late and it dissolves into etheric uh, substance that falls to the ground and is splattered and vanishes soon afterwards from far inside the, uh, the building you hear the satisfactory, satisfactory cry of joy. Got it! Good. As he managed to find and repair the device long enough to close the portal from without. Perfect and timing. Think... <laughs> hmm? Graveler, hold the door. And do I notice the uh, extra pebbles that are on the stairs that used to be Graveler? 
Yeah, you kind of look over towards where Graveler is supposed to be and nothing but a pile of rubble and a pile of goo oh, beside shit. it. And the rubble starts to itself vanish into nothingness. Where's the orb? Good question. Is it somewhere like there? <laughs> respawn in my backpack or something? Or No, you set it out to, in order to summon him. But you don't see it there right now. We might have to search the corpse. Make an investigation yeah. check. Yeah. Let's loot the body. I found Jello. That's a 15 for investigation. All right. As you're desperately looking around, you don't see where it rolled to. Maybe it was caught underneath the creature or rumbled aside by some of the emo the immersions. And then you look into one of the holes where one of the tentacles came out of. And there, lodged in the bottom of the hole, is the orb. It takes two of you to kind of crawl in there and then re retrieve it. But after a few minutes, you do. And then... I also uh, collect my calf drops. All right, I'll, I'll pick it up. It's like, man, you, you did your best, man. And I'll kind of just caress the orb. <laughs> and and Duda, I think it was in the backpack. Duda comes out and inspecting kind of the, the, the destruction of Odak. Well, old friend, maybe we'll meet again someday. Wow, this place looks built? terrible. I got some work to do. But overall, I'd say that was a pretty successful test. And that's where I'm going to uh, tie it up for Test. the night. We'll start this up again in two, in a little more than two weeks, actually, because we're not, we're on a two week uh, alternating schedule, but that happens to hit Halloween, so it's going to be a, a three week schedule before we're back again. Uh, looking for longer sessions like this one, hopefully. Uh, apologies for the disruption, because of course disrupted. Uh, <laughs> but and I would go back to the other screen where we have all our faces larger, but I'd have to rearrange them because I have to do that every time we reconnect. Um, so apologies, but hopefully uh, you had fun watching. I think we had fun playing. And oh, yeah. you guys, you guys. Big numbers. After the aftermath of all of that, you have a moment to rest and reflect. You learned a few things. You just leveled up. Hey! Psych, you learned not to trust the GM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the thing about, like, you, you, this is a good test. It's like, was this fucking guy just testing us? Like, did he open a portal? Wood, <laughs> wood. <laughs> Woot woot. So that's it for tonight. Uh, thank you once again to my players. And uh, happy Halloween. This was kind of meant to be somewhat of a scary episode from that perspective. It was good. Uh, and we will return once more uh, in in November. November the 7th, I believe, is the next game date. So please mark it on your calendars. Join us at twitch.tv slash ENCAF1 on Sunday afternoons, 3 o'clock Atlantic time. Or find all the episodes on youtube.com slash ENCAF1. Look for Legends of the Drowned Isles. That playlist contains this and the first campaign. Or look for C2, The Great Confusion, for just this episode, or just this campaign. All right, folks. Have a good one. And again, happy Halloween. Spooky.